All right, next question. Who is the mother of the civil rights movement? Civil Shepherd. Oh, man. <laughs> it's Rosa Parks. That's 17 wrong in a row. This game is rigged. <laughs> what is going on with you? Relax, it's just a game that you're horrible at. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. hey. No fighting in the teacher's lounge. Yeah, you gotta fight in the cafeteria with the rest of the kids. <laughs> Why are you so upset anyway? Well, I know because I've seen his school records. And it would be unprofessional for me to say, but let's just say it rhymes with, didn't graduate. <laughs> that wasn't even clever. He just said it point blank. What's he talking about, Tony? You graduated with us. Look, I failed my final history exam. I didn't get my diploma. Are you happy now? But you were at the prom. So was the DJ. Why couldn't you tell us? Why would I? Look how you treat me when I get a couple of answers wrong. Well, actually, it was 18 in a row. Hey! <laughs> See what I'm saying? Hope you're proud of yourself, Jamal. Yes, sir. I graduated. <laughs> Flying colors. Box office sensation Marcus Jackson is being prosecuted for his recent mishap with the paparazzi. I find you guilty as charged and order you to teach a class at South Central High School. Do it. Marcus, the man I've been chasing. Bobby, hey, baby. Hey, look, if you're going to ask me to read those scripts, I still say no, buddy. Scripts? What scripts? Right there. Think of them as checks. Mm -hmm. Ooh, here's a check for $17.5 million. Mm. Here's a check for $20 million. And here's my favorite, a check for $25 million and a producer credit on moi. I don't have time. But you don't even have to read the whole script. Just, just pick one. Hey, Mr. J. What's up? Can I do my book report on this? For the last time, Milton, Batman is not literature. Batman is not literature. That is sacrilege. Opening weekend, I made over $100 million. Milton, try reading something that doesn't have sound effects and thought bubbles. Nobody talks like that, Flair. Zoinks! You have to do a book report on something stupid. Hey, kid, I got an idea. You need to do a book report. I need to get Marcus to read these scripts. How'd you like to make 10 bucks? Ooh, bleep, blam, boink! <laughs> sure. Okay, how about nine? <laughs> what do I have to do? Just do a book report on this script and then help me get your classmates to do book reports on these and you'll be $8 richer. I thought you said nine. Did I? All right, fine. Seven it is. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 come on. No, he didn't. No, he oh. didn't. <laughs> I believe that's the game-winning touchdown. Oh. Somebody flagged me for excessive celebration. <laughs> good day, good day. Hey, Tony, you got to go over here and shut this man down. Go ahead, man, give him something. I don't feel like playing, dude. Hmm? Don't you and Eddie Einstein over there go to the library or something? Get out of here. That's Albert Einstein. Einstein. Whatever, dude. Jamal, come on, man. Do you always have to be you? What, mean, what did I do? Tony's our boy. We're not supposed to make him feel worse. We're supposed to make him feel better. Don't worry. By tomorrow, this argument will be history. <laughs> so Tony won't remember it anyway. <laughs> hey, Samantha. Hey. Can I ask you something? OK, shoot. <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad, it's all clear. <laughs> okay, see, I have this friend, and he, well, it's kind of embarrassing. Well, go ahead, I won't judge. See, this friend, um, he never graduated from high school, but everyone thinks that he did. My goodness, Marcus, you are so brave. <laughs> wait, no, yes, yes. Okay, wait. It's, I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about a friend. I get it. Your friend didn't graduate. You're so cute. Marcus, I know you're talking about you. It's okay. No, seriously. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Tony. My friend Tony. The big bald guy or the little bald the guy? The big bald guy. He failed his final history exam and he didn't graduate. All right, well, if he only needs to pass one test to graduate, then why don't you talk to Principal Martin? I'm sure he'll be happy to let Tony retake the exam. 
Absolutely not. <laughs> Under no circumstance am I gonna allow him to take that test again. And there's nothing you can do or say that'll change my mind. Well, that's too bad because I got two courtside tickets to the Laker game this weekend. Bam! Done. Make sure he has a number two pencil. <laughs> Learn while you learn. You gotta read something for those book reports. Why not get paid six bucks to do it? I thought you said seven. Look, Missy, I got middle schoolers who'll do it for half that price. You in or you out? I'm in. Remember, make your oral reports pop. Because if your presentation is picked for Mr. J's next movie, you'll be $20 richer. I'm on a payout, may vary. What was that last part? Nobody listens to the disclaimers four eyes. Just make these babies sing. Is this legal? You know how they said there's no such thing as a stupid question? They lied! Now beat it! Good job at spreading the word. You've got great potential, kid. <laughs> Thanks, partner. So, if he makes one of these movies, we split the commission 50-50, right? 50! <laughs> how dare you use the F word in my presence! <laughs> what do I get? Probably upset. <laughs> Out of my way! <laughs> Okay, Tony needs our help to pass this history exam. He'll be here in a minute. Everybody act normal like any other day. Tony! What's up, baby? Wait a minute, are you working out? Did you get a haircut low and tight with highlights? What? Mm. Look, uh, there is nothing going on here out of the ordinary, player. Just need you to sit down right here in the middle. You acting weird. And why are these chairs set up all half circling? Wait a minute. Is this an intervention? Nope, it's a histervention. What? Tony, Principal Martin has agreed to let you retake your history final, and if you pass it, he'll give you your diploma. And we're here to help you pass. I don't need your help, especially not from him. Come on, Tony, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. You know how I am. Yeah, you know how he is. He's a jerk, he's insensitive, he's obnoxious. Okay, that's enough. No, no, there's one more. Okay, and he's completely annoying. That, that's the one. <laughs> Apology accepted. So why do I need to learn something that already happened? Because if we don't know our history, then we are doomed to repeat it. Yeah, like when you repeated seventh grade. Oh, I'm sorry, you just slipped out. Don't you want to pass the test, get your diploma, then get a good job and maybe retire one day? <laughs> Not really, I'm retired now. You gotta give it a shot, Tony. All right, all right, I'll take the test. What do I need to do? All right, have a seat right here in the middle. Here we go. We put together a couple of flashcards to help you remember. A couple? How far back in history did you go? The Flintstone? You know they ain't real, right? <laughs> Whatever. Good plan. We may be in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna ask you a word or a phrase, and you're gonna give us the historical significance. I'm gonna start with an easy one, Tony the Tiger. Lincoln. Continental. What does that have to do with history? My daddy had one a long time ago. <laughs> All right, son. Who chopped down the cherry tree? George, George. Jefferson. <laughs> Please, <man. laughs> well, Jefferson was a president, and he did move on up. That is not the answer we were looking for. <laughs> what started the Great Depression? That's an easy one. <laughs> when Lionel Richie left the Commodores. <laughs> it was a sad day, but no. <laughs> Next. Okay, white flag. I give up. Oh, hey, you got one right. No, no, man, I really, I give up. I appreciate y'all helping all, man, but I've missed every last one of these things. It's just our first day. I mean, we got time. Just face it. I'm the child that got left behind. <laughs> Whoa! Sorry I'm late. <laughs> oh, jeez. For me again? <laughs> Not another intervention. I want to thank you for trying with Tony last night. History isn't for everyone. <laughs> okay, Marcus, don't give up so easily. People learn in different ways. You know, Samantha's right. Some people learn, others don't. Tony is what I like to call others. <laughs> He's 
getting there. Oh, really? I heard last night that Tony thought D-Day was a wet t-shirt contest. <laughs> you know, you don't have to rub it in. You're right, I don't have to. I also don't have to eat this tasty pastry, but I want to. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Tony's gonna take that test tomorrow and he's gonna graduate. Okay, don't snap at me. I'm just trying to stop your buddy from failing again. But I have to admit, it is fun to watch. <laughs> Maybe Principal Martin is right. Am I just setting Tony up for another heartbreak? No. You are just believing in your friend. You just need to find something that motivates him. What's his favorite thing in the world? Hey, Chocolate Star. Cassandra. Yes? I really need you to do something for me. Perfect. Bye. <laughs> Talk to Mama. Okay, Tony, all you gotta do is get one question right and Cassandra here will give you a kiss. <laughs> Close mouth, chump. And you're gonna owe me dinner. A very expensive dinner. <laughs> and a car. This kiss is as good as mine. Okay, you missed 32 in a row, but you know what they say, the 33rd time's a charm. People do not say that. Man, this is a waste of time. Let's do it again, but let's start with the kiss. <laughs> I'll see you at the car lot. <laughs> Somebody at this school can help you. I'm not giving up on you, Tony. You're getting sleepy. <laughs> Your eyes are getting heavy. Marcus asks you a question, you will give him the correct answer. Who's buried in Grant's tomb? Cary Grant. <laughs> Hugh Grant. Oh! My grandfather? And you ain't even hypnotized. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. I think he hypnotized himself. <laughs> Not now. I'm watching my favorite TV show. Soul Train. <clears throat> uh, well, <laughs> did it work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry we let you down, Tom. Look, I told y'all guys, you got no one to hold them, no one to fold them. Are you actually quoting Kenny Rogers on this couch? <laughs> <laughs> he always quotes songs. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Hey, I got an idea. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 Marcus, what are you doing, man? Hey, if that's a grocery list, we got a hot sauce. And deodorant. <laughs> Rap to this, Tony. I need a beatbox, Jamal. All right, all right. <clears throat> In 1773, Boston dissed tea. In 1776, America was free. Lincoln was fed up. In 1861, and four years later, the Civil War was won. In 1929, the Great Depression began. In 1969, there was a fall. Ah! Ah! What is this? When was the Boston Tea Party? 1773, in Boston. Mm -hmm. Okay. When was the Great Depression? 1929. <laughs> <laughs> In 1969, it was a small step of man. We got a man on the moon. <laughs> Do you know what's going to happen? We go to Principal Martin's office tomorrow. We're going to let him know you know what's up, and you, my man, are going to graduate. <laughs> hey, 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 quiet. Shh, shh. Okay, Carlos, let's hear your book report. Fade in. In a world where two nations collide, only one can remain standing. Now, as the city explodes behind him, Braxton kisses Trish, and he says, You're the bomb, baby. Take it out. Okay. Good job, Carlos. Not my type of book, but excellent work. Who's next? And the aliens kept coming with no end in sight. Ah, oh, they eat my face! They eat my face! They eat my face! Ah! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Nathaniel's hand grazed ever so slightly against Priscilla's. It was then she knew that their love would always be unrequited and forever be buried in the pantry. <laughs> Zack tears off his shirt, revealing his abs of steel. It was then we knew that this powerful man wasn't just gonna get the girl. He was gonna get every girl. Fantastic. That's what I'm talking about. That's the type of book I would like to read. Give it up for Camille. Good job. Well, I've got good news. You don't have to read it. You're gonna be in it. <laughs> So let me guess, these are all movie scripts. Yep, and you picked a blockbuster, and you don't have to do it till summer. Okay, fine, Oscar. you got me, you got me, you win. I will do this movie. <laughs> and it's a great story. Yay, he picked my script! Okay, hey. Uh, here you go, my dear. Five crisp one dollar bills. Wait, but you said 20. You haven't writing? No. Welcome to showbiz, kid. It is three bucks. Wait a minute, this is only two dollars. Oh, you're right. <laughs> oh, gee, thanks. You shouldn't have. Right again. <laughs> All right, Tony, you get one shot at this test. If you pass, you get your diploma. And if you fail, well, I don't have to tell you how to deal with failure. That's your specialty. <laughs> All right, here we go. Question number one. Who was the second president of the United States? Come on, Tony. Come on, Tony. I'll never get this one. Gotcha. Hit it. <laughs> Look, seizure or no seizure, you still have to answer the question in order to pass the test. Who was the second president of the United States? George Washington was first in line. Then John Adams came second, and he did fine. It was a president. Oh. Uh, all right. That was just lucky, really. All right, question number two. Name the first African-American to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Ah. Uh, hit it! Don't get your panties all up in the bunch. The brother's name was Mr. Ralph Bunch. All right, yeah, you got that one right, but I'm gonna take off a point for rhyming bunch with bunch. What else rhymes with bunch? Uh, Captain Crunch. <laughs> you call yourself a principal? <laughs> Captain Crunch never won the Nobel Peace Prize. I hate my life. All right, next question. Hey. <laughs> <sighs> Congratulations, you passed. What? What? <laughs> Don't even think about it. So I graduate? No. What? Why not? Look, no one graduates with an outstanding library fine, okay? You still owe 1300 bucks for an overdue book. What book? Uh, Kenny Rogers, the unauthorized biography. What? The man's a vigilante. You mean visionary? Same thing. You don't stop him from talking, I'm gonna change my mind. Okay. Oh. Don't worry about it, T, I got you covered. Consider it a graduation gift. All you have to do is spell graduation. Come on, man. Hit it! G-I-A-D-U. A-T-I-O-N. Okay, get out. Oh, oh, what you get? Uh, my diploma. Yes. Oh. All right, goodbye. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Again? We need more men. They're supposed to be green. They're fuchsia. Yeah, they fuchsia. Save the world. No green men. Green. Hey, you guys not gonna answer that? I'm a little busy here, Marcus. 
so nobody can answer the door. What? And let the earth be destroyed? You are so selfish. You guys are so lazy. Marcus, what's wrong? Look! It's just a cupcake. Can you turn that stupid game off? My bad. And it looks delicious. So eat that! My stalker made this cupcake. Fellas, we got problems. We? I don't have a stalker. You got a stalker? Nope. I don't have a stalker. I got a cupcake, but I don't have a stalker. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Marcus Jackson is being prosecuted for his recent mishap with the paparazzi. I find you guilty as charged in order you to teach a class at South Central High School. Let's do it. Hey, don't answer that. It could be her. Marcus, stalkers don't knock. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, you said there was an emergency. I rushed right over. I called you four hours ago. Well, I had to go to lunch, then I had to get a haircut, but after that I went to yoga class and got a back wax. Thank goodness. But then after that I rushed right over to my mechanic to get an oil change. But now I'm here. You're welcome. <laughs> Bobby, my stalker's back. Oh, that's wonderful. What are you talking about? If she kills you, you'll be all over the internet. You'll be relevant again. I'll be able to book you anywhere. Book me, I'll be dead. Oh, details. Quit playing around. It's not about publicity. Crazy Debbie is dangerous, man. She was the one that terrorized me, remember? Actually, I don't. You've had more stalkers than Tony's had girlfriends. You've had two stalkers? <laughs> Wait, Jamal, remind me. Which one was Crazy Debbie again? Remember, she's the one that used to dress real skimpy. She used to wash Marcus's cars. Actually, that was Tony's mama. My mama washed your car? Marcus, man, Crazy Debbie was the one with the big cupcakes. Exactly. Tony's mama. You need to stop playing around. Crazy Debbie was leaving these cupcakes everywhere just to let me know she could get close to me. Listen, if you're that worried about it, I'll hire back your old bodyguard. You don't need a bodyguard. I got a black belt. From Walmart. <laughs> Crazy Debbie don't need to know where I got it from. <laughs> on everything. <laughs> you don't need none of that. Me and Jamal watch Kung Fu Theater all the time. We got all the moves. Check it out. It gives me great honor to serve as your protector, for I am a master in the art of Kung Fu. And Bobby, your fly is down. What? Made you look. <laughs> you guys stop playing around. This is serious. I apologize. It will never happen again. Listen, I'll hire your old bodyguard back. All your problems will be solved, all right? In the meantime, I have more important work for you, Tacky Chan and Kung Fu. <laughs> more important than protecting my life? Since you're not making movies anymore, yes. Out of my way. So getting rid of all this junk out of your storage is more important than Marcus's life? Duh. Hardwood floors in a storage unit. That's Beverly Hills. Let's say we help you out. What's in it for us? All this worthless junk. I mean, all these valuable antiques. Listen, I've already gone through everything I need. So, do whatever you want with the rest of it. Keep it, sell it, burn it. I really don't care. Just make sure everything's out of here by the end of the week. So you want us to work hard for stuff that you're giving away? What, we look stupid? You don't really want me to answer that. But let's just say it rhymes with yes! <laughs> Out of my way! That's Bobby. Thanks, thanks, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> hey, remember these? Oh, yeah. Tony, go deep. Boy, I can catch a BB at midnight. There <laughs> we go. Oh. oh! What happened? It's not midnight! <laughs> Hi, Marcus. Oh God, oh God, oh God, I'm sorry, you know what? 
I am so sorry. I'm so happy it's you, Cassandra. Oh, good. Because I'm just a little bit on edge right now. I am a, uh, I'm being stalked. I park in front of your house for 10 hours one time, and I'm a stalker. I'm not talking about you, okay? I'm talking about, you did what? One time. Hey, you two. Hey. I want to introduce you to the new sub. This is Robin. Oh, Robin, hi. Marcus Jackson. I cannot believe I am meeting you in the flesh. I have seen all of your movies. Okay, thanks. It's nice to meet a fan. And I'm? I'm not just any fan. Uh -huh. I am your biggest fan. Really? Yeah, actually, on the way down here, she was going on and on about your career. I didn't know that you recorded a single back in the day. I bought every copy in the store. Oh, well, if you did, you're a real fan, because my mama didn't buy that. <laughs> Oh, it was so mm -hmm. nice to meet you. I'm sure we'll be seeing each other. And it was nice. <laughs> Can you believe that? No! I have just been snubbed by a sub. And I just met my stalker. <laughs>《Bobby, I'm telling you, my stalk is right here in the school! Well, how do you know that? What, is she wearing a name tag that says, Hello, my name is Marcus the Stalker. <laughs> this is Sub Robin that started yesterday. When did the cupcakes arrive? Yesterday. What's the main ingredient in cupcakes? Flour. Where does flour come from? Wheat. And where does wheat grow? In the ground with worms. What eats worms? Robins. Come on, dog. It's right there. It's so obvious. She wasn't even clever about it, right? <laughs> Sorry, I stopped paying attention when you completely lost your mind. Bobby, this is why I need a bodyguard. Fine, it's your money, but your usual one's not available. So we gotta find someone else who's big and dumb. What'd I tell you about running in the halls? I oh, wasn't even running. I know, you need to start. You're late for class. <laughs> Hurry up. It's perfect. Andrew? Well, I'm not taking a bullet for you. Hey, Thompson, <laughs> come here, I have a proposition for you. <laughs> My client here is in a bit of trouble. We need to hire a big, dumb bodyguard. What? A big, handsome bodyguard. What's the matter? Would a bitty baby can't fend for himself? <laughs> oh, you got jokes, huh? Yeah, I do got jokes. Well, bring them all. Actually, that's the only one I got. <laughs> Bottom line, I wouldn't be your bodyguard if you paid me a million dollars. Really? How about a thousand bucks a day? <laughs> Back away from the target. You heard what the man said and step away from the target. You're hired. How about you this old Marcus Jackson single? Oh man, biscuits and groovy? That was a classic. Two dollars. A buck if you take the whole crate. No, I'm good. Hey, wait a minute, that's a great deal. You'll never find another biscuit and groovy. So, I see you two have finally found your calling in life, peddling junk. Let me tell you something, Don Cheeto. This is not junk. This is secondhand, slightly used, mostly damaged, brand new merchandise. Okay, well, I'd like to purchase something. How much for your dignity? Oh, bummer. You've already sold out. What are you doing here anyway? Shouldn't you be at school crushing some kid's hopes and dreams? Well, actually, I'm on my lunch break. And to relax, I try to uh, find deals under the radar. For instance, how much do you think I pay for this fine suit? Eight dollars? How dare you? Ten dollars. It came with a vest. Hey, how much for the uh, dogs playing poker painting over there? Dog playing poker? Are you serious? Let me see this. This is brilliant. Look, they're dogs, and they're playing poker. Look at, <laughs> look at they hold the cards with their paws. Look at the Kylie with the smirk on his face. I bet he got all the good cards. <laughs> it's hilarious. So how much? Five dollars. Six for you. I'll tell you what, I have five dollars. Sold to the little man with the little afro. <laughs> and a cheap suit. All right, I'll be back for the painting. I'm gonna pull my car around. You need a push? <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> Crazy, man. I don't understand. Uh oh. Wait, Wait a minute. I tore up the painting. What happened? I, wait, this is another painting under here. The artist signed his name. Picasso. Picasso. Oh, no, 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 Tony. That's Picasso, man. I've heard of this type of thing, man. When people find really valuable paintings under worthless ones, Picasso's are worth millions, man. Millions? Yes. We rich. Yeah. We rich. <laughs> we just sold it for $5. No, 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 no. What are we going to do? Tony.
Tony, it's okay. We're gonna buy it back. <laughs> oh, boy, it's time for me to get back to school and pretend like I care. <laughs> oh, no, 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 wait, 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 hold on. We sold you this painting by mistake. Right. We're gonna need to buy it back. Oh, okay, sure. I'll sell it back to you for six. Hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars? How'd the price go up so fast? Simple. It became mine. <laughs> Let me confer with my colleague. Okay, you do that. Come here, man. Who is this colleague? We gotta split the money three ways? You're my colleague, fool. Let's get the deal done. Wait, wait, six hundred dollars is a lot of money. We don't have that kind of cash. You think he'd take credit card? Oh, he does. <laughs> does it matter if the credit card says Marcus Jackson on it? It does not. Hey, that's not your credit card. It's not yours either. He's been getting paid. Oh, yes, he got money. What are you doing? Waiting for your prom date? These are my bodyguard threads. You like it, huh? Not many people can pull that off. Yeah? Yeah. So you should probably go to the locker room and pull that off. Well, I would, but I can't leave my post. I got a really important job to do. See, little frail Marcus, mm -hmm. he needs a real man to protect him from, get this, a girl. <laughs> so I just need to make sure that she doesn't get into here. <laughs> How'd you get in here? I walked in. See, you didn't see her the same way you're not gonna see that paycheck. My bad. I won't let that happen again. From now on, no one's getting by me. Absolutely no. How'd you get in here? I walked in. Now I see why you don't play basketball anymore. You can't guard anybody. So, Marcus, I got your text. Uh, 911, get here quick before she deals me. Not deals, kills. Oh, well, either way it goes, you're still in the pickle. <laughs> pickle. I was gonna kill you? Look, I know who you are. You're crazy Debbie, okay? You've been stalking me for years. I don't know what you're talking about. Get rid of her. You have no idea how dangerous these stalkers can be. Mm. Marcus, how could you be so heartless? This woman is just trying to earn a living by educating our poor, underprivileged children. You know what? It's cool. If anything happens to me, it's gonna cost you a fortune. Hit the bricks. Sorry. <laughs> we cannot afford any more lawsuits at this school. I can't this. I didn't even do anything wrong. It's so unfair. That is the saddest thing I've ever seen. Her firing? No, your tux. <laughs> you know, Marcus, now that you've upset her, you'll really need a bodyguard. And I can promise you that no one's gonna get by me again. <laughs> wow, that was quite a show. Oh, did you Oh, forget it. Hey, the Temptations called. They said they need that tux back. Boom, 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 boom. Marcus, I heard the good news. Mm. I signed your checks. Congratulations. You got rid of your stalker. You've become completely irrelevant. Again. Stalker? The only thing he got rid of is a hardworking teacher. You had no real evidence. What are you talking about? Marcus, the odds that Robin was your stalker are like a million to one. You got rid of her because of your own paranoia. Anybody could have left those cupcakes. Where is your heart? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. God, what if she's right? What if I got an innocent person fired? So what? It feels good, that's all that matters. I fire somebody every week just for target practice. It's, it's invigorating. Watch this. Hey Lurch, you're fired. What? Why? That's my favorite part. For absolutely no reason. What? So get out! Ah, <laughs> it's invigorating. You just convinced me that Samantha's right. And put out that fake cigarette. No smoking in the teacher's lounge. <laughs> Don't try this at home, kids. It may fake kill you. Robin, thanks for stopping by. Well, I was surprised when you called. Look, I feel terrible. 
This incident must have been traumatic and embarrassing for you. Not to mention, it could keep you from getting a job in the future. So, to make amends, I wanted to give you this autographed picture. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Your generosity is overwhelming. And I'm going to talk to Principal Martin about you getting your job back. You do that for me? Of course I would. Since you getting fired was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is really sweet of you to take responsibility for getting me fired. Especially since you didn't take responsibility the last time. Sorry, new ringtone. <laughs> Please tell me you're not the maniac stalker that snuck in here and, and left that cupcake! You don't remember, do you? I catered a movie you did called Miles Apart. And it was all good until the star complained about the cupcakes and got me fired! So it is you. Crazy Debbie, what do you want from me? I just want you to take a bite, Marcus, and admit they're delicious! I'm not eating that. And why not? Because you're crazy. And second of all, you're crazy. Eat the cupcake. Get out. Eat the cupcake. Get out. Eat the cupcake, Marcus! Angie. Hey, fool. I just realized I never got paid. Angie, thank God this is you. We just found Crazy Debbie. She's pinned behind the door, and she admitted she's my starker. Let me call the cops. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Sorry about the cupcake. Let me help you with that. Oh, oh, thank you. <sighs> yes. Yes, I'll hold. You are so sweet. So are you. <laughs> Man, you know, I'm really feeling that crazy thing you've got going on. Yeah? <laughs> well, you're kind of cute yourself. <laughs> Get out. Andrew, stop hitting on my stalker. Hey, what do you say we blow this place and get something to eat? Oh, yes, I am famished. Marcus invited me over here and didn't even offer me any food. Hmm. <laughs> you really hate him, don't you? Mm -hmm. Hate is such a strong word. More like despise. <laughs> we have something in common. Can I have a bite? Don't eat it. Andrew! <laughs> hey! You stole my stalker! Andrew! <laughs> Never mind, now he got the stalker. Wow! You really got rid of everything. This place looks amazing. What's with the painting? You said we can keep anything we want, right? Yeah, that's right. Why? Do you see this? You see what that says? Yeah, it says Picasso. <laughs> My friend gave it to me as a joke. Why do you think it was in here? You didn't really think it was a Picasso, did you? you... No, nobody could be that stupid. <laughs> What's so funny, man? Look at the great day. He's smoking a pipe. Does anything good ever come out of that hole in your face? Who are you talking to? Picasso? I guess cats don't gamble. Oh dear, my pencil. I just can't seem to hang on to it. I just need to hang on to it a little bit tighter. Oops. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong, why this pencil just keeps slipping through my fingers. <laughs> I am just so clumsy, aren't I? Cassandra, what are you doing? <laughs> Haven't you noticed that I have been dropping my pencil? Cassandra, I'm busy. 
And I want to get busy, too. <laughs> Could you stop it? Are you trying to make me look desperate and needy? No, you're doing a good job of it all by yourself. And you're making me feel uncomfortable. Goodness. I'm sorry. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. Thank you. Have a seat. Whoa, girl, you cannot be giving me a massage in the teacher's lounge. Why not? Nobody's looking. <laughs> oh, maybe you're all right. <laughs> Why don't we go down to the janitor's closet instead? <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yes. We can't go together, but we'll attract too much attention. Right. So you go first. I meet you there in five minutes. Five? Five. We on the same page. Yeah, yeah. All right. Go ahead. Pick it up. Marcus. 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 I'm sure it's been more than five minutes. Marcus! Rock <laughs> the sensation Marcus Jackson is being prosecuted for his recent mishap with the paparazzi. I find you guilty as charged and order you to teach a class at South Central High School. Marcus, you look tired, man. Yeah, You be tired, too, hiding from Cassandra all day. <laughs> what? She came up to you again? Man, I've never met anyone more relentless and annoying as she is. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> Second thought, maybe I have. Just bringing over your family. I can't help but notice how light the bag is since you decided to stop making movies and do community service, Professor Selfish. <laughs> I like when Marcus get fan mail. Women send them valuable gifts trying to get his attention. Back off, scavenger. There's nothing valuable in there anymore. <laughs> Marcus, what's your secret, man? What do you tell these women to keep them going crazy over you? <laughs> Most of the time, I say, hey, what's up? I'm Marcus Jackson. I got that. I'm going to try that tonight. Hey, what's up? I'm Marcus Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Fool, you can't do that. Why not? You're not me. <laughs> You're being real negative today. <laughs> this is delicious. Jamal, is this your famous mac and cheese? Oh, yeah, that was dinner. Go ahead, man, help yourself. I'm way ahead of you. I'm going back for seconds. <laughs> hey, save something for me. Look at all these letters. Women are flipping out over Marcus. What does he have that we don't? How about a job? Fame. All right? Think about it, Tony. Women love famous dudes. Well, we need to get famous. Wait a second. That's it? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. You need a breath mint. <laughs> Oh, man, my food is amazing. I'm thinking maybe we could do an internet cooking show. And we're gonna call it Mac Daddy and Cheese. <laughs> uh, that's actually a good idea. That is a good idea, but you still need a breath mint. <laughs> hey, Marcus. Oh. Hey there, Cassandra. <laughs> I would love to talk to you, but I'm in a rush. Because uh, one of my students was in a terrible accident and... Oh, my uh, it's goodness, a, what happened? It's an emergency. Milton tripped and broke a bone in his spleen. There's no bone in your spleen. I know. That's why it's an emergency. <laughs> hey, Mr. Jackson. Milton! Oh, my God. You're alive? It's a miracle! I mean, I wouldn't call it a miracle. My mom actually saw it was a mistake. <laughs> what you think that your mama said? Look at you acting like nothing happened. <laughs> he is so brave. I'll see you later, Mr. Jackson. All right, Milton. Bye, Mrs. Washington. Bye, Milton. Uh -huh. yep. You sure like playing hard to get, don't you? Cassandra, I'm not playing hard to get. I'm playing impossible to get. 
Okay. You got me. Yes, you I got do. me. So I guess there's only one thing to do to get out of this, huh? That's right. All right. <laughs> Very well played, Mr. Jackson. Hmm? Very well played. Into Principal Martin, we need to talk. Ah, uh, Marcus, what can I do for you? Wait a minute, what are you doing? Besides ignoring you, Tai Chi. It centers and relaxes me. <laughs> Crushing skulls, very relaxing. <laughs> I need to talk to you. What do you do when someone just won't stop bothering you? I'm trying to figure that out right now. I'm serious. So am I. <laughs> My teacher here is harassing me. That's very serious. Tell me the person's name and I'll set them straight. Hey! Oh! It's Cassandra. Ooh, you're on your own. Is that all you have to say? Follow the words of my sensei. When a fly is caught in the spider's web, the tiger shall drink from the shadow of the sun. Wow, that is deep. What does that mean? It means get out of my office. She's your problem, not mine. Hey, Marcus. You ratted me out, didn't you? Oh, what would make you say that? Because I was listening. OK, fine, I did. And how'd that work for you? You heard it. I'm on my own. <laughs> as long as I'm here, baby, you'll never be on your own. Look, Kobe. Right. Advantage Marcus. Game on. Okay, you ready? How do I look? Not as good as me, but in a half. <laughs> and action. I always wanted to say that. <laughs> Welcome to the sizzling new internet cooking show, Mac Daddy and Cheese. I'm Mac Daddy. And I'm the cheese. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about the versatility of cheese. Or as I like to call it, versatilities. Now that's cheese delicious, Tony. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so here we have a simple white cake. Boring! How do we take this boring white cake and turn it into an amazing dessert for everyone? Put some cheese on it! <laughs> now we have cheesecake. <laughs> Jody, mm. that is cheesy delicious. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get to our next thing. <laughs> All right. Let's say you got a little honey coming by the crib and you want to have a nice little dessert like the Mac Daddy does. You, a date? Just roll with it, okay? <laughs> She's not gonna want that plain old vanilla ice cream. So how do we jazz it up? Put some cheese on it. <laughs> uh, now we have ice cream cheese. Wait, that was my line. You were too slow. No, you still not a good line. What you gonna do about it? <laughs> Put some cheese on it. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yes, I did. Well, guess what? <laughs> We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back. <laughs> Wait, Marcus, what are you still doing here? We're supposed to meet at the soul food restaurant. I can't go in there by myself. Are you crazy? <laughs> Damn, get down. This is a weird time for Jungle Boogie, but all right. <laughs> Good God, yo. I made get away from the window. I'm hiding for Cassandra. She's lying on the roof of my car. Well, that's what that is. I thought you went moose hunting. Why are you hiding from Cassandra? She won't leave me alone. It just doesn't seem to sink in that I'm not interested. No matter what I do, it seems to make her want me more. Well, of course, you're one of the biggest movie stars in the world, thanks to me. You're sexy, you're hot, 
You're a himbo. A himbo? What am I supposed to say today? Simple thank you would suffice. No, I'm talking about Cassandra. How do I get rid of her? Oh. Well, when it comes to that, as you and your homies say, I got this. <laughs> Let four-time divorcee Bobby Gold talk to her. When it comes to repulsing women, my motto is act naturally, and the rest will take care of itself. I can't believe you're bragging about this. What can I say? I have a gift for turning women off. Okay, fine. Work your magic, but what are you going to do? <laughs> Don't you worry about a thing. When I'm done talking to her, she'll want nothing to do with you. <laughs> Okay, your problem is solved, it's all done. The bobster came through. Great! <laughs> you have a dinner date. What? Xander's <laughs> coming to your house tomorrow night at eight. You're kidding, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Jamal, get in here! What's up? Mac Daddy and Cheese, internet sensation. Tony, you weren't supposed to put that up on the internet? I wasn't done editing yet. I seen what you was doing. You're trying to cut me out. You can't cut the cheese, man. You can't cut the cheese. Yeah, don't be so sure. Oh, man, look at this. We got 500,000 hits. We went viral, Tony. In only eight hours. Look at some of these comments. Mac Daddy and Cheese show is the cheesiest show ever. They talking about me. <laughs> Wait, wait, and look at this right here. They don't belong on the internet. Obviously, they think we belong on TV instead. <laughs> Must cheese TV. <laughs> Man, we just got invited to the Interwebby Awards. Man, that is the 25th biggest internet award show in Southern California. You know what this means, Tony, right? You know what this means, Tony? We famous, baby. We did it, baby. Ah, come on, come on. Uh, 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 uh. We got in the way. The Marcus does. To the Marcus came. <laughs> Miss Thing's gonna be here in a minute. Put this in your ear. And it has a mic on it. So I'll hear what you say, and you'll hear what I say. How do you have all this spy stuff? Well, how else would I know how much you spent on my birthday present? You bugged my house? <laughs> <laughs> Only twice. What? Huh? huh? What? what? Oh, Cassandra's here. Now remember, just say what I say. Bobby, this has to work. Trust me, before you know it, she'll be gagging at the mere mention of your name. <laughs> Cassandra, come on in. I knew it was just a matter of time. Hey, Marcus. Oh, what you got in the bag there? You going by the bus station later? Just a little fun for after dinner. Well, let me help you with that. Thank you. The Ooh. operative word is help. Ow. Ow. Ow, your silk freak is on. Didn't realize you were going to move so fast. Me likey. Well, what can I say? Oh. <laughs> what can I say? Go make me dinner, woman, while I sit on the couch and scratch myself. Go make me dinner, woman, while I sit on this couch and scratch myself. You're a real man. I like that. <laughs> Tougher than I thought. It's gonna be tougher than I thought. Oh no, it's not. I'll make dinner. Okay. What are we having? I'm having lobster. Mm, lobster. <laughs> and this is for you, a box of cereal. Eat up. Whatever you don't finish, we'll take down the skid row and we can share it with my mom. Mm. I love a man that's good to his mama. <laughs> oh, I can't take this anymore. I just want to go to bed. I can't take this anymore. I just want to go to bed. Ding dong! Ding, ding, ding! We have a winner. Why are you making me say that? Who are you talking to? Hmm? Oh. oh, well, I have voices in my head. I have multiple personalities. I'm so crazy, my voices hear voices. I didn't know that about you. Shh, shh don't interrupt us. <laughs> you know what, here's a few other things you don't know about me. I don't like to be touched, okay? I pinch babies till they cry. I don't bathe, and I lead a toilet seat up. And I hate puppies. 
used to such a turn on. Come here, baby. <laughs> monster are you? Don't you get it? He's trying to get rid of you. He's trying to turn you off. He doesn't like you. He wants you to beat it. Scram. Stop it. it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough, okay? I'll call you tomorrow. Go home. Go. Fine, I'll go. And you, you're desperate, you're shameless, and you're impossible to get rid of. Oh, you'd make a great agent. Call me. <laughs> Man, I'm so sorry. I should have never agreed to this crazy stunt. Was he feeding you lines this whole time? Yes. I just didn't want to hurt your feelings. Well, you did. Why didn't you just tell me the truth? The truth? <laughs> I'm a little afraid of you. Why are you thinking I'm so afraid of me? Please! Cassandra, let me just talk to you for a second. Come on. Just, just, uh, Cassandra, look. Cassandra, sometimes you come on too strong. I mean, I'm flattered that you like me, and I like you too. But I'm not looking for a girlfriend right now. I need a friend. That's cool, I guess. So friends? <laughs> With benefits? <laughs> if you ride to the airport, you know you can count on me. Your boy got you. <laughs> you know, Marcus, the night is still young. How about some fun? What? <laughs> I got Chinese checkers, <laughs> Domino, Domino. Oh. and Jacks. Jacks, Jacks. Get it. All right. You know what they say? Once you play Jacks, you don't go back. <laughs> So you guys went clubbing without me? Of course not. We'd still be in line. And if you could get in, we'd pay the cover charge. <laughs> My bad, stupid question. So where were you? We just got back from, wait for it, wait for it. Internet Webby Awards. <laughs> you were supposed to wait for it, Tony. I got excited, I'm sorry. <laughs> it ain't every day we get invited to a fancy award show at the Howard Johnson. <laughs> Conference room C, baby. Everything. So I take it, Mac Daddy and Cheese is a big hit? No, nope, not really. <laughs> Marcus, you don't understand, man. We got invited just so they could make fun of us, man. So we walked in there, they started throwing cheese at us and everything. I'm gonna mess up my clothes. Don't you mean my clothes? Well, I'm gonna go Okay, one of them. Marcus, you don't understand, man. We've been like the laughing stock of the whole wide webby world. Wait a minute. They threw cheese at you, thought you were a joke, made fun of your show. Why are you guys so happy? Because the plan worked. We famous, baby. Let's see all the numbers we got. Marcus, check this out. Look, look. Keisha, Angela, Renee, Chuck. No, Chuck, that's for you, T. I need your number. I got nine of my own. Way to go, Tony! You got numbers from nine just a girl? No, I got nine numbers from one girl. Let me see that. Let me see what you worked with. Man, don't you know it's ten digits in the phone number? I know that. And when I figure out that missing digit, we gonna get married. <laughs> Maya Angelou's writing is very inspirational. Who can tell me the powerful last words of her poem, I Rise? The end. <laughs> it ends like this. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise! <laughs> Sorry, Milton, were we disturbing you? I was fine until you screamed in my ear. I'd appreciate it if you stayed awake in my class. And can you get the drool off your face? Sorry, Mr. Jackson. I was out all night with my girlfriend. <laughs> okay. Girlfriend? Is that his dog's name? <laughs> he doesn't have a girlfriend. No girl wants to go out with a guy who still wears footy pajamas. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I do too have a girlfriend. I mean, she may have a weird smile and a third ear and a receding hairline, but I care about it. So you guys be nice. Milton, you ready for lunch? Sigh. Close your mouth. Uh, close your mouth. Come in, boo. 
Box office sensation Marcus Jackson is being prosecuted for his recent mishap with the paparazzi. I find you guilty as charged and order you to teach a class at South Central High School. Marcus, we go way back, don't we? How can you not tell me about this? Let me see that. <laughs> Bigfoot and Elvis secretly wed? Man, I didn't even know they were dating. <laughs> no, not that story. The next page. Oh, man, check this out. Top supermodel Jahari Jones, Cuddles comedy action superstar Marcus Jackson, looked out for Hollywood's hottest new power couple. Is that fantastic? This is exciting. Oh, you're everywhere. It's all over the internet. You're relevant again. Why you didn't tell us, man? Because you guys was going to ask me to hook you up with her supermodel friends. <laughs> right now, man. Could you? They don't even have to be super. It don't matter if they can't fly. <laughs> no, really, Marcus. How'd you meet her? You remember I did the voice for the animated movie? She was the mermaid. I was the clam. You remember? It was called Finding Clamo. I remember when she kissed you and you became a merman. Remember that? That was so beautiful. It would. Because when you. Stay strong, uh, Tony. Stay strong. Uh, it was so beautiful. It was just the fact that. Oh, God. Just keep going. Keep going. Well, congratulations, Clammy Davis Jr. <laughs> It still doesn't explain why you kept it a secret. I didn't want the press invading my privacy, like this. You call it an invasion of privacy. I call it free publicity. <laughs> you aside, this girl loves attention. You remember that dress she wore to the People's Choice Awards? Mm. Made entirely Ooh. of pasta? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing but spaghetti and four well-placed meatballs. <laughs> Hallelujah. She has some nice fettuccine, if you know what I'm meaning. <laughs> she was marinara sauce. <laughs> She was marinara sauce. Bobby, you killed it. Hey, Mr. Jackson. We heard you hooked up with Jahar. Mm. So, we're gonna give you two a nickname. Which one sounds better? Jaharkis or Mahari? <laughs> I don't know. Which one sounds better to you? Detention or suspension? I told you he was sticking to Mr. Jackson. They need to mind their own business. <laughs> I need to speak with you in the hallway, Jaharkis. <laughs> this is for you. The card says it is from your girlfriend. Listen, I am sick and tired of your fame and your celebrity disrupting my school. Okay, I'm sorry. From now on, I promise you I'll keep a low profile. Is that all? No. You better open this sucker. Just because I'm mad doesn't mean I'm not curious. <laughs> okay, let's open it up. Surprise! Happy New Week anniversary! You call this low profile? Hey, Jahari. Um, normally someone waits at least a month to celebrate. True, but I'm not ordinary. <laughs> something for you, too. Is there another box? Marcus said the school doesn't have a proper theater. This check should cover the construction costs. It's my gift to Marcus for our anniversary. Sure there's not another box. Anything that's important to my baby is important to me. Oh, you are so wonderful. But it's also important to me that my kids learn today. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. All right, everybody, get back to class. Nothing to see here except a once-in-a-lifetime spectacle. Come on, get back to class. Those elves aren't going to make themselves. By the way, your baby Marcus thinks that it's important for me to have a hot tub in my office, so... I love our relationship. No pressure, just keeping it real. No commitments. That's right, because we're committed to not, not committing. committing. I'll see you 
you later tonight. Don't be late. I won't. I won't. Well, here we are. Welcome to my house. You know, I really like this place. Oh, thank you. In fact, it's perfect. I know, right? Wait, perfect for what? I don't know. Maybe for us to have some cozy, intimate, alone time together? <laughs> well, I'll uh, wrap it. Seriously, on a Wednesday? If this is alone time, I wonder what happens if she throws a big party. <laughs> Letting me win? Yep. I'm sorry. I just like seeing you happy. Wanna take this? Sure. Okay. I got a winner. Well, excuse me, ladies. I'm working here. Can you take all of that outside? Bye bye. Hey, <laughs> baby. Come join the party. Hey, Jahari, I like to party as much as anybody, but it's a school night. I gotta grade these papers. I'd use the bedroom, but your tiger's in there. Oh, don't worry, take his house train. <laughs> Let me help you with that homework. Jahari, stop. What are you doing? I'm helping you a lot. All work and no play makes Marcus boring. Here's the thing about parties. They end. Marcus, why are you being such a pooper scooper? I think you mean party pooper. Whatever. It stinks. Look at you. You're the hostess with the leastest. OK, fine. Let's go swimming. Yay! Do me a favor. Go get my swim trunks. They're in my bedroom. Thank you. Let's go. On everything. Having fun. Yes. I'm having so much fun. And the paparazzi's not here. Mm. Mm. Let me see you walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. <laughs> Smile for the hat. <laughs> Guys, wake up. I gotta get to class. Fellas, I need your help. <laughs> hey, baby, you can't uh, change your bikini right here. What's your phone number? Where's she at? <laughs> They're all gone. We gotta clean this place up. Hey, Tony, you get the patio, I got the kitchen, you clean up this little living room, and uh, can you water the plant? Plant? Yeah. <laughs> that plant wasn't here before. Oh, yeah, that's Jahari's plant. She brought that by yesterday. Ooh! <laughs> you know what that means, right? Jahari is planning on moving in. <laughs> No, oh, no, Marcus, this is what women do. Check this out, man. <laughs> First they leave a plant, mm -hmm. then they want a drawer. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're living together. Then she's saying stuff like, son, you need to get a job. <laughs> no, that's my mama. <laughs> Come on, little bro peep. It's just a plant. <laughs> and you're just about to say I do. my backpack. And where's the homework you did for me? Oh, it's right here, my sweets. Thanks. I'll see you later at my house. I'm gonna show you my bedroom. Really? Yeah. It needs to be vacuumed. <laughs> Are you gonna let her talk to you like that? Yo, can't you see? She's just using you. She's not using me. I have chores. She has chores. Really? What are her chores? To watch me do my chores. And she's really good at it, too. I'm sorry, but this is just pathetic. No, the only thing that's pathetic is how jealous you are of me. <laughs> Listen, my stay at home alone on a Friday night, friends. This is what a real mature relationship looks like. Milton, now! <laughs> what can I say? The milkman delivers. Come in, boo. <laughs> just who I wanted to see. Mm. You two are women, right? Some more than others. 
<laughs> what does it mean when a woman leaves something at a guy's house? Mm, like what? Makeup, toothbrush. A baby? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that. It's just a plant. Ooh! Why does everybody do that over a little plant? I don't get it. Marcus, think about it. What is a plant? It's a living thing that needs to be taken care of. I think Jahari is trying to send you a message. And that message is, bye, Tux Boo. <laughs> Jahari's just into the excitement, like me. She doesn't want to get tied down. All women eventually want to be tied down. Mm, I know that's right. I said tied down, not tied up. Come on, sometimes a plant is just a plant. Right. And sometimes men just want to hear about your day. Some of us do. Really? Oh, because I had the most horrific morning. First I got a flat tire, then when I took my cat to the vet, I found out she has diabetes. I'm sorry, I have to go. And now I have to get her kitty insulin and... Bored. <laughs> Hey, have you guys seen the latest tabloids? Yes, Beverly Hills plastic surgeon abducted by aliens. Isn't anyone happy with the way they look? <laughs> no, I'm talking about Joe Harkis. You two are on the cover of all of them. What? Hey, how is this happening? These pictures were taken right in my house. There must be a hidden camera around here. Who cares? You two are hot. You should make a movie together. Remake that one about that girl and her bodyguard. What was it called? The Bodyguard? No, The Bodyguard. What? What? Huh? Can I get a beep beep? Okay, whatever, Dumb and Dumber. Have you ever talked with Jahari yet? There's no need. Everyone was blowing the plant thing way out of proportion. And believe me, Jahari and I are on the same page. Mm -hmm. Look, a man with five arms made the Olympic swim team. Nothing but gold medal on everything. <laughs> Jahari, I was just thinking about you. Hey, baby. Hey. I've got a surprise for you. Okay. She got a surprise for me, Tony. Marcus, I'd like you to meet my mom and dad. Mom and dad, this is Marcus. My lovely family with such beautiful smiles. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> now that we've gotten to know each other a bit, how about a tour of the house? Jamal, Tony, would you do the honors? And I'll talk to you guys in a minute. We'd love to show your in-laws around. No, we wouldn't. Yes, we would. <laughs> you play poker, Morgan Freeman? <laughs> how much money you got on you? And don't lean on me. Jahari, we never talked about meeting each other's parents. What's the deal? I just figured we're getting along and we're getting closer, and I like your friends. I don't even like my friends. Quit playing. You know we're perfect for each other. I thought we were committed to not being committed. That was before I got to know you. I can't be wild and crazy forever. You're everything I want in a husband. You're funny and sexy and... Uh, I know you're gonna make a great father. Ooh. <laughs> Why would you say funny before sexy? Because I love funny. Look, being with you has made me want to be a better woman. I wake up every morning and I'm just happier knowing I'm going to see you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't want to get married. I'm just not ready to commit. A two-year phone plan freaks me out. Look, I can take care of this for you. You can't? Absolutely. I know a guy who can get you a one-year phone plan. I know. I'm talking about Jahari. Oh. I'm gonna have to give up my whole life. Hanging out with the guys, clubbing, wearing my sexy red leather pants. Oh, I love my leather pants. <laughs> Once you get married, leather pants are always the first thing to go. And second is the will to live. Sorry to interrupt, but you've got to see this. Look at him. It's just not right. 
Milton, can I talk to you for a second? Sure, Mr. Jackson. Hold on one second, though. <sighs> I mean, you can find yourself another bench or go to the principal's office. It's totally up to you. <sighs> Milton, how do I put this delicately? She doesn't like you. I know, Mr. Jackson, but for a guy like me, that's the best I can do. She was using you as a chair. Trust me, you could do better. He's right. I bet there's a dorky girl somewhere just dying to meet a geek like you. Look, Clayton Danielle, I'm taken. Milton, you remember the Maya Angelou lesson that you slept through in my class? No, I was asleep. Let me tell you what you missed. Maya Angelou told a guy who disrespected her, if I allow you to pluck one hair from my head, someday I'll wake up bald. She never let anyone disrespect her even one time. You shouldn't either. Got it. Rhonda, I'm breaking up with you. I don't want to be bald. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. From now on, all my relationships will be based off honesty and respect, just like your relationship with Jahari. <laughs> What's wrong? Jahari, you're amazing. But honestly, I'm not ready to settle down. And I know, I know it's upsetting, but don't be mad at me. Be mad at the guys that will lie to you just to kiss those soft, beautiful lips. Mm. Man, I must be out of my mind. <laughs> no, I hear you. I appreciate you telling the truth, but it still hurts. You're a supermodel. You can have any guy in the world you want. How bad can it hurt? Here, let me show you. Mm -hmm. Oh! Mm. Mm, that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, hurry. I can't figure out how they got a picture of me with Jahari's parents. Well, those paparazzi, they have no shame. Mm. Did you ever find that hidden camera? Nope. Strangely enough, though, the paparazzo who took the picture got his finger in the frame and had the same pinky ring as yours. What? That thief stole my ring! <laughs> I'm water. I knew I should have eaten that salt bagel. Mm -hmm. Really, Bobby? Okay, fine, I took the pictures. But look, any publicity is good publicity. Hey! Hey! hey. We ready to party? Yes, we yes, are. Right. But give me a minute. Jamal, get that can. One, two, three, bachelor. Perfect. Let's hit it. I'm back. I'm back. Hey, I'm single too. Hey. Hey, what's up, Mr. J? Not your jeans. Pull them up. It's a style, man. Yeah, in jail. <laughs> Danielle, what did your mother say when you left the house in that outfit? She said that as soon as I get home, I better take these clothes off and put them back in her closet. Really? Well, listen to me, young lady. When you get home, you tell your mother, give me a call. <laughs> what? I'm single. Marcus Jackson is being prosecuted for his recent mishap with the paparazzi. I find you guilty as charged and order you to teach a class at South Central High School. I love you in those jeans. I know you didn't think I noticed, but I do. Man, what are you talking about? Shh, I'm on the phone. Okay, baby. No, you hang up first. No, no. Hello? She hung up first. Who is that? Man, I met this hottie at the grocery store. I hit her with the, hey, red shirt. Hey, red shirt. <laughs> she got mad. Why? She was wearing a green shirt. 
But then I whispered those magic words to her. I live with Marcus Jackson. <laughs> She's coming over this afternoon to hang out as long as she can meet Marcus. Tony, don't you think that's a little shallow to take advantage of our relationship with Marcus just to get girls? Yep. <laughs> shallow and effective. <laughs> On February 1st, 1960, students staged the first sit-in at a lunch counter in North Carolina. Why did the students stage a sit-in? Because they were tired of standing. <laughs> no. I think the sit-in had something to do with the black students not being allowed to sit at the counter with the other customers. That's right, Carlos. Wow, I've never said that before. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Jackson, I'm sorry to interrupt your class, but I am the principal and I can do whatever I want. So what do you want? What do I want? I want order. I want respect. You're gonna have to go to another school for that. And I've seen you students walking around my hallways with your ball caps and your saggy pants and your clothes so tight that it looks like your mom bought it from the toddler section. <laughs> So I think it's time for South Central to usher in a new era. The era of uniforms. What? Uh, yeah. Not Hit it. Whoa. Coach Thompson is wearing a ball collection. Khakis and a white button-down shirt ensemble, which says, I'm here to study, and I'm not going to trip over my pants. I know what some of you are thinking. Yes, it does come in actual human sizes. Thank you, coach. And next we have the lovely Ms. Washington. Who, if she wants to keep her job, knows exactly what she needs to do. Five, four, three, two, one, good. And those are our new uniforms. Whoa! I knew you kids would react that way, and let me assure you that I don't care. <laughs> Uniform goes in effect first of the month, what? because I know that's when your parents get their unemployment checks. <laughs> so, no excuses. <laughs> Here are your test papers. And somebody got a perfect score. I did? You sure did. This is a zero. <laughs> like I said, perfect. <laughs> All right, class is over, everybody. Tomorrow I want to see you with your homework or whoever's homework you decide to buy. Let's go, get out. <laughs> class is over, school's out. Let's go, go, go. Yeah, we know, but we're not leaving. Why not? Because we don't want to wear those ugly uniforms. Yeah. We talked it over and we're protesting, just like you taught us. Mm -hmm. Mr. J, this is officially a sit-in. <laughs> Guys, what are you doing? We don't think it's fair that we have to wear those whack uniforms. But is a sit-in really the answer? Absolutely, you inspired us. We learned it worked for the kids in North Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's North Carolina, and those kids were willing to pay a steep price. So are we. We already contacted Principal Martin with a list of our demands. And we're gonna sit in until our demand is met, no matter how long it takes. All right, whoever doesn't want me to call their parents right now, go home. Now you'll be labeled a coward until the day you die. Look, my mom said if I get suspended again, it will be the day I die. <laughs> Listen, guys, I've already heard your demands, and my answer is no. That's not fair. The man said no. Nada. Niente. Añijo. Añijo? What, you don't speak Korean? <laughs> anyway, that's why we're not moving. We're exercising our civil rights. This is a public school. You don't have any rights. All the kids want is to be heard. Yeah, well, all I want to be able to do is slam dunk, but you don't always get what you want. I can slam dunk. It's always far. Even in heels. Guys, that's not the point. The point is we're trying to teach regulation goal. All day. <laughs> okay, whatever. Look, 
Marcus, you started this, you're gonna fix it, okay? Nobody leaves until this is settled. Okay, fine, I'll talk to him. Open the door. My fellow strikers and I have confirmed. We all agree that until this matter's over, you are one of them. <laughs> wow, I'm shocked. That they turned on you so quickly? No, that he used the word confer. Man, it's almost four o'clock. Where's Marcus? Probably got held up at school. Literally. <laughs> you look a little comfortable for somebody who's about to leave. I got a date. You got to beat it. Yeah, Bobby, respect the man. He's got a date. You got to go, too. I just made a sandwich. <laughs> now it's to go. How you going to throw my sandwich outside the door like that? You know what? My bad. I'm sorry. Why don't you go out there and get it? And take him with you. You know what? Both of y'all, here, go to the movies. I can do that. Oh, wait, wait. This is my specialty. I'll take it from here. What good is a movie without a bag of... Two bags of popcorn? <laughs> here, get the popcorn. Oh, yeah, oh I like did it. I say popcorn? I meant popcorn and candy. Oh, I'll be boy. <laughs> like and of course, this. we're going to need something to wash it down with. Hey, Marcus. Yeah? W wait, slow down. What? Oh, all right, yeah, I'll be right there. All right. Be right where? Where's Marcus? He's supposed to be here. I told my date she could meet him. Well, he's not coming. Guess you'll have to rely on your own charm. <laughs> ah, good luck with that. <laughs> what am I gonna do now? I don't know about you, but I'm about to go to the moon. Wait a second, Bobby took all the money. <laughs> I told my date she could meet Marcus Jackson. He can't be at two places at once. Maybe he can. I can act like I'm Marcus and she would never know the difference. You know what? I like the way you think. Those kids have been there for a couple hours now. I'm glad you agreed to give these kids a little time to work things out. It's a good lesson for them to learn. Really? And exactly what are they gonna learn? How to break the rules? That's the only thing they're good at. Why don't we just break the door down and drag them out? What would that teach him? That these doors are cheap. I'm sure they already know that. Can I break the door down anyway? I mean, I've always wanted to do that. Not this time, Bigfoot. Me? Okay, it's not me. Me? All right, I'm going in. Don't be alarmed. You're not a hostage. I was terrified. Watch the shoes. They cost more than your house. Bobby, I asked you to wait outside. What are you doing here? Saving your career. Somebody tweeted you're forcing these students to wear tacky uniforms. This tweet makes you look like you're out of touch with the young people. You know, your demo? Okay, guys, what do you want? You want to be heard. We're not the only students who feel this way about school uniforms. It's not about clothes. It's about expressing ourselves through fashion. Or the lack thereof. Thanks. That's not a compliment. Look, guys, talk to Principal Martin. He's a reasonable... I can't even say that with a straight face. Well, you better do something, because you're on the wrong side of this issue. I'm not choosing sides. I just believe everyone deserves a right to be heard. Wait, what? Look, I know what I gotta do. <clears throat> Principal Martin? So, did you talk some sense into your little breakfast club? Yes. And I'm proud to say that they know all your points and they actually learned a lesson from what I taught them. So what does that mean? It means, hey, no, uniforms go! I'm here at South Central High School where mega movie star turned teacher Marcus Jackson is leading a protest against school uniforms. Mr. Jackson, why are you doing this? I'm not leading anything. I'm merely here in support of a nonviolent demonstration. You better get up out my seat! Camille! I said nonviolent! <laughs> I believe that these kids deserve the right to express themselves through fashion. Wearing uniform will make us all look the same. Now, who would want that? Ahem! I dress according to the way I feel. So today, I guess you're feeling cheap and out of style, right? <laughs> 
plan put you at odds with all your faculty members? Well, you can ask them yourself, and I guarantee you I have their support 100%. <laughs> Traitor! 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 As you can see, we have a standoff. Hopefully the cooler heads will prevail. For Action News, I'm Trisha Martinez. Okay, all you gotta do is go in the back and make some noise like you Marcus. I'm gonna tell him Marcus is sick and can't come out. Do I sound like Marcus? No. Do I sound like Marcus now? Yeah, when he does his impression of Prince. <laughs> oh, it must be her. Okay, go in the back, act like a sick Marcus. <laughs> hey, Raina. Hey, where's Marcus? Whoa, 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 whoa. Marcus in the back, he's under the weather, okay? Uh, let's go over here and get to know each other. You're right. How rude of me. Hi, my name is Raina, and I'm a Scorpio. Okay. I hate long walks on the beach, I think decaf is pointless, and I'm looking forward to getting to know you better. <laughs> After I meet Marcus. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Uh, don't you want some Kool-Aid? No, thank you. Okay, all right, all right. Well, I made meatloaf. I'm a vegetarian. Okay, well, we can just eat the loaf. Uh -uh. Is that Marcus? Oh, well, you know what? Let me see. Let me find out. Let me, wait a minute. Let me see. Marcus, are you awake? <clears throat> I'm, I'm awake, but I, I'm just not feeling well. Hi, Marcus. My name is Raina, and I am, like, your biggest fan. Can I come back there? No. no. Uh, <coughs> I'm, I'm really contagious. Why don't you and my very, very... Very good friend, Tony. Just have a good time in my house. <coughs> and uh, you you should kiss him. It's the next best thing to kissing me. It'd be rude to ignore our host's suggestion. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to walk into the house talking to his actual shadow. <laughs> Well, they've been in there for a couple of hours. They're probably starving. We could use this last pizza to lure them out. Oh, is that what they're for? Four? <laughs> Look, they're waving us in. Oh. oh! Finally! Okay, wait, wait. It could be a trap. You go in first. Me? What, what if they tear me apart? I'll tell your story. <laughs> what? Look, this event could make a great movie of the week, but somebody's gotta die. But you're the principal. All right, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> All right, then. You ready to surrender? Nope. The art of negotiation is compromise. You showed them your idea, what you thought they should wear. Now let's take a look at their idea. Hit it, Bobby. Okay, Carlos is modeling a tasteful redo of what was previously banned. Clean, neat and we no longer see his tidy whities <laughs> It screams I accept your dress code, but I'm still me. Thank you, Carlos. And next, we have Danielle sporting an outfit from our own Lost and Found collection. As you can see, her blouse is cute, but now has maximum coverage. Though it's not a uniform, she is certainly informed on the latest fashions. Thank you, Danielle. Walk it out. Lost and found. Never mind, I don't want to know. There you have it. No uniform, but a dress code everyone can live with. Okay, well, I applaud your effort, but my answer is still no. What? You know what? Listen, when I was your age, I had to toe the line and dress conservatively. You're going to do the same. That's how you want to play. It's time to bring out the big guns. <laughs> oh. Oh. You call this conservative? <laughs> Here we have Principal Martin, draped in early super fly gear. Wait, where did you get that? Don't you worry about it, Jive Turkey. That's from your high school yearbook. This is my personal favorite. Touches my heart. February 1979. No, no, not that one, please. I, I won't do it, I won't do it. I'm not, I'm not cruel. Oh, my fingers! Oh! Listen, that 
I was way ahead of my time, all right? I was rocking that hairdo before Kid even met Play. I was making a statement. What statement was that? Stay away from ceiling fans? Principal Martin, that's all I'm saying. These kids are trying to make a statement. Okay, you made a good point. I understand how important it is to express your individuality, but do it within the dress code. No sagging jeans, no short skirts, and no uniforms. Did you hear that? You won! Wait, 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 on one condition. What's that? You gotta delete these pictures. Done. You know I make copies, right? <laughs> I'm a little disappointed. I heard his voice, but I could hear that on a DVD. Oh, wait a minute. What if you got a chance to touch Marcus Jackson's hand? Would that be enough? Oh, that would be great. You really think you'd let me? I think you would. Wouldn't you, Marcus? Uh, sure, sure I will. But remember, I, I can't let you see my face. I, I got the flu and pneumonia. I got pneumonia. It's horrible, but I just washed my hand. touching Marcus Jackson's hand. It's a lot softer than I thought it would be. It was like a woman's. So now you can tell your friends you touch Marcus Jackson's hand. I have to see you. I no. have to. No, no. No, I'm not leaving you till I see you. Wait a minute. No. <gasps> Marcus! What? Yeah, Marcus. It is you. For a moment I thought Tony was trying to fool me. <laughs> no, nah, Tony's a good dude. He told me how much you wanted to meet me, so here I am. But I'm not feeling well, so I'm gonna go to bed. Uh, nice to meet you, Raina. Good night. Night, Marcus. Bye -bye. <coughs> hey, you owe me, Tony. <coughs> <sighs> Does he always wear shoes to bed? Actors. <laughs> so you met him. Uh, I guess you'll be going, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> But I thought you liked Marcus. I just wanted to see him. He's too tall, famous, and good looking. Not my type at all. <laughs> Give me a stocky, bald man with mama issues, and I am all over it. Fuck <laughs> her up. Oh, everything. <laughs> Not gonna do itself. Did you use hot water? Nope. Then how do you explain this? <laughs> oh. Don't blame me. Blame your two best friends, Ben and Jerry. Are oh, you calling me fat? You don't shrink my sweater to a halter top. <laughs> Let's face it, Tony. You look like a busted can of biscuits. <laughs> oh, it's raining jokes. Have a seat, muffin top. Hey, what's hey up? guys, how are you? Hey, nice man bra. <laughs> Marcus, I have the most amazing news. You ready for this? The studio is releasing your passion project. The ski bomb? Mm -hmm. That's my all-time favorite. It's mm -hmm. been on the shelf for like three years. That's the movie where you played the homeless skiing chip. Yeah. You stopped drinking and you picked up the slopes. I wrote, produced, directed, and starred in that film. It's truly my labor of love. Well, love don't pay the bills. Against my advice, you didn't take a dime up front. We don't get paid unless it's a hit. I didn't do Ski Bum for the money. Ski Bum puts me in the same league as De Niro, DiCaprio. And don't forget Delusional. <laughs> Box office sensation Marcus Jackson is being prosecuted for his recent mishap with the paparazzi. I find you guilty as charged and order you to teach a class at South Central High School. Do it. Hey, Milton, 
Do you have a minute? Sure, but I can't be late for PE. The guys get really upset if they can't slap me with their towels. <laughs> well, I want you to know that you're doing great this semester. And if you nail this next test, you're going to get an A in my class for sure. Wow. I love getting A's. Milton, I'm really, really proud of you. You could be a role model for this entire school. You mean like everybody's going to want to be like me? Uh, no, not exactly. Uh, but they're all going to want to get better grades. Seeing you work hard, it validates me as a teacher. I get it. If I get an A on your next test, it'll make both of us look good. Mm -hmm. I mean, not saying you don't look good already. Thank you, Milton. Except when you wear too much blush. You do that a lot. <laughs> or when you wear that purple shawl. Did you make that? Don't you have a class to get to? Samantha, I found this purple shawl in the teacher's lounge. Is it yours? No, no, that's not mine. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh. Dominoes. <laughs> Bobby, what's going on with the premiere? Well, everything's moving forward, but I'm getting mixed signals from the studio. Mixed signals? Like what? Ah, it's more like drop signals. They hung up on me. <laughs> Why would they do that? Probably because I was screaming at them at the top of my lungs. They want to have the premiere in Alaska. And Marcus, they want you to fly coach. <laughs> yeah, right. They don't even have coach on a private jet. <laughs> exactly. They're flying you commercial. And when you land, they're not sending a limo, they're sending a dog sled. Well, that could be fun. <laughs> Think again. They're sending the sled. No dogs. <laughs> Don't you get it? They're trying to bury the movie. This is the best performance of my career. I gotta get it to the people. Matter of fact, how about we set up a screening at the school? You sure you want to do that? Absolutely. Set up a preview at South Central High School, and I'll pick up the cost. Wow. How generous of you. You'll pick up the cost of a whole DVD. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. It's not like we had a choice. You made this our homework. <laughs> and rolling out the red carpet for your boy. <laughs> Actually, I think that's blood. <laughs> Isn't this just fabulous? South Central High's very first premiere. All the glitz, all the glamour. And that's just me. <laughs> hey, good luck to that, Marcus. I don't need luck, Freddy. This movie's going down in history. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it'll be just like the Titanic. Exactly. <laughs> One of the biggest box office hits of all time. <laughs> I was referring to the actual ship, not the movie. But hey, think happy thoughts. <laughs> I'm proud to be here at South Central with all the people I truly care about and Principal Martin. I just got a shout out. You must be so proud. Honestly, this film is dear to my heart. And let it be a reminder that true greatness only comes when you follow your passion. And right now, this is my gift to you and to the world. My personal masterpiece, The Ski Bump. Enjoy my movie. Yay! Have a good day, ma'am. Hey, man, you want your windows washed? I I'm walking here, you bum. Go jump off a bridge, Robert Williams. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? It's like God's icy fingers are touching my homeless soul. <laughs> Wait. I feel something changing. I don't want no more booze. I just feel the need, the need to ski, <laughs> to go for the girl. Hey, Coach, I'm going to open a window. It's starting to stink in here. I know. Isn't it great? <laughs> you ain't never skied in your life, and the Olympics is next week. Why should I waste my time coaching you? Maybe I never skied the slopes. But I skied many times in my mind. <laughs> Help me, skis, maybe. 
help me win the Olympic gold. All right, kid, I'll help you. But there's only one way to become a ski champion in one day. And that's to outrace the avalanche. Everybody think. I was rooting for the avalanche. You know how you taught us that if we don't have anything nice to say, we shouldn't say anything at all? Yeah. But well, what about it? Wait. Wait. Oh. Hey. Come on, guys. Come on. Listen. Hey, stop. You guys didn't even see the bonus footage. It's amazing. Bonus footage? Uh-uh. No. Get out of my way, people, or I will trample you. What happened to Bobby? He climbed out the window during your dance number in the movie. Yeah, break dances with wolves was pretty hard to watch. Hey, Marcus, are they gonna translate the movie into Spanish? No. Oh, good. My people are safe. <laughs> mm. What am I gonna do, Bobby? If my friends are dissing me like this, what's the public gonna say? We're doomed. Ski bum will never make a dime. What were you thinking? We all tried to talk you out of it. Not true. Are you kidding me? I stood on this very spot three years ago and begged you not to do the movie. <laughs> Don't do it! <laughs> Too subtle for you? <laughs> yeah, man, I remember telling you not to do it too. I'll never forget it. It was a gray September morning, 64 degrees outside. I was wearing a fuchsia t-shirt I got from your closet. Don't make that movie, Jab Turkey. <laughs> yeah, my hair was fly back then. It was an aphrodisiac. I tried to talk you out of it, too. I begged and begged, and you wouldn't listen. <laughs> Marcus, you genius. Ski Bum is brilliant. You should direct, write, act, do everything. What a sucker. I didn't know it. What was up with your grill? Look like you've been chewing chains. Don't be dissing my flashback. I can't believe this. Ski Bum is going to sink my career. Yeah, it's going downhill real fast. Bobby, what are we going to do? Look, let's just all relax. You screen the movie for a few loser teachers and a bunch of future inmates. Most of them have never even seen the snow. Although they do know a lot about bums. <laughs> Let's just wait and see what the critics have to say. <laughs> yeah, right. Morning, Marcus. Beautiful day, isn't it? For who? Come on, Marcus. The birds are chirping, the sky is blue, and nobody said a word about that horrible movie you made. <laughs> I mean, you want some waffles? No, I don't want waffles. I just want my life back. Then blueberries it is. The reviews are in. What did I tell you? 100% positive. I knew the press would appreciate the ski bum. Ah, appreciates an understatement. Listen to this. The ski bum, what a movie. New York Times. Oh, and, th and this one. This film is destined to be a classic. Yes. Daily variety. Oh, and listen to this. 
This is filmmaking at its finest. Tom Hanks was brilliant. Tom Hanks? He's not in my movie. Huh? Oh, I mean, I meant Marcus Jackson. <laughs> Give me this is a review for Forrest Gump. Oh, how'd that get in there? This is what it really says. Ski bum. What a movie to skip. Oh man, ski bum. Destined to be a classic. Bomb. I'm sorry, Marcus. I was just trying to cheer you up. You can't cheer me up, Bobby. I'm gyrating in a hopeless abyss. Oh, in the graveyard of ambition. And I thought he overacted in the movie. Yo, I can describe the ski bum in two words. Pain. You know what? <laughs> no, he wrote that mess and he gave me a C on my book report? No, no, no. My favorite part was when he goes, Darn you, Batman! Yeah, my favorite part is when it said, The end. That voice, too. Were you guys talking about my movie? Oh. Uh, uh, no, we were talking about starting a ski club. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. You know, we just felt the need. The, the need! just finished grading your test. Oh. Okay. And I have to tell you, I am very disappointed in you. Why, Miss Owens, what happened? You got an F. You've been my best student all semester. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. You happened. You put too much pressure on me. I'm no role model. I'm just me. This is all your fault. God. Hey, easy, Milton. I'm a failure, Mr. J. I failed. Come here, Milton. Let me talk to you about life, man. Look, you're just a snot-nosed kid. What do you know about failure? Have you ever lost an amazing career? Have you? Huh? There goes his Teacher of the Year award. Tony, we're in trouble. Two days ago, Marcus had 25 movie offers. Today, he doesn't have a single one. Every studio in town is backing away from him. It's Ralph Washburn all over again. Who's Ralph Washburn? Exactly. Exactly. Marcus hasn't been to work or showered in three days. Is that what that smell is? I thought he brought home a copy of the ski bomb. I'm serious, Tony. If he keeps this up, he's gonna turn into a real bum. No, he's not. I'm working on something that's guaranteed to lift his spirits. I'm writing fan mail to let him know there's people still out there that love him. Wait, let me see this. This is written on Marcus Jackson letterhead. And you put your name on it. Ah, right. You think that's a tip off? You think? And look at this. That's not even a real stamp. You drew a picture of one. You think I'm gonna put a real stamp on a fake fan letter? That's stupid. Hey, guys. Hey, buddy. Like the new look. Pity party. Hmm. Don't start, Bobby. I'm not in the mood. Yeah, I wouldn't be in the mood either if I'd made the worst movie ever. <laughs> Nobody's gonna get that? Sorry, I'm busy working on your self-esteem. You're gonna be working a long time. Hi, Marcus. We're sorry to come by unannounced, but you've called in sick for three days and we were worried about you. She was worried, I was suspicious. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm not feeling well. <coughs> Oh my God, Marcus, please. You're not a good enough actor to fake an illness. <laughs> hey, did you forget we saw the ski bomb? <laughs> okay, fine. I'm just not in condition to teach. I'm very depressed. Well, so are half the teachers at the school. Just do what they do. Drink your breakfast and get to work. <laughs> Can't you be nice? Well, sure I can, but what's the fun in that? Marcus, come here. Now, I know you're upset, but there's something I need to tell you. What? Milton quit school this week. What? Because my movie bombed? <laughs> now, nah, that's a fan. Will you stop focusing on yourself? Okay. It's because he failed his last test. He's done really well all year, and then he has one setback, and it sends him into a tailspin. 
Wow, that sounds familiar. <laughs> Listen, Milton is a good kid with a lot of potential. And as long as he keeps trying, he will succeed. But he's destined for failure if he quits. Well, that was very moving. You know, you're a better actor than he is. I believe what I said. Really? You also believe that those shoes match that blouse. It's gonna be a long ride back to the school. Oh, I've got news for you. Hmm? Those shoes that you're wearing are your ride. Okay, I know what I gotta do. Burn every copy of the ski bum? No, I gotta find Milton. Hey, kid, we need more fried rice. And don't forget the tea. Yes, sir, coming up. Hey. Hey, Mr. J, table for one? Nah, man, I came here to talk to you, not to eat. Good, you don't want to eat here. They recycle the crispy noodles. <laughs> Milton, you don't belong here. Look, just because I'm not Chinese doesn't mean I can't climb the ladder. I mean, they told me if I play my cards right, I could be head busboy before I'm 50 years old. No, I mean, you gotta come back to school. You can't let one bad grade ruin your entire future. Mr. J, I was supposed to be a role model. I let everyone down. No, you didn't, Milton. You can't let one bad grade define who you are, just like I can't let one bad movie define me. I don't know, Mr. J. The ski bum really stunk. <laughs> don't push it. Sorry. Look, the point is, I made a bunch of great movies before I made The Ski Bum, and I'll make a bunch of great ones after it, too. And you'll have time to make plenty good grades, but you have to be back in school. Well, maybe you're right. No, I know I'm right, Milton. Bottom line is, we never quit. But I got this great gig here. What am I supposed to do? That's easy. Quit. <laughs> All right, I got it. I'll be back in school tomorrow. I was tired of smelling like fried shrimp anyway. <laughs> hey, kid, where's my rice? Hey, you need to adjust your Kung Pao attitude. Yeah, and get your own rice. I quit. I have a test to retake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, can you spare some change for a lift ticket? <laughs> I feel the need, the need to ski. <laughs> Marcus, relax. Back to school night is a breeze. You'll do just fine. It's easy for you to say. This is my first time meeting my kids' parents. What if they don't like me? What if they think I'm here for all the wrong reasons? Look, if they think that you're a teacher who couldn't care less about their kid, tell them they are lost. Cassandra's class is three doors down. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. My class is four doors down? <laughs> Oh, hello, Marcus and meaningless others. Came right down as soon as I heard the news. Bobby, all I said was tonight is back to school night. Why are you here now? Well, teaching happens during the daytime, and if you're gonna be here at night, I consider that a personal appearance. And that means these people are gonna have to pay De Niro. Forget about that, Bobby. I'm worried about these kids' parents not liking me. Well, that's ridiculous. Why would they buy a ticket if they didn't like you? Nobody buys a ticket. Back to school night is free. Free! Don't say that word! It burns! It burns! Don't you have something to do or a script to read? Oh, yeah, yeah. I read the most amazing script today. You rescue a group of tourists from a Chinese prison. It's called Midnight Panda Express. Bobby, please, I'm gonna go home and get ready for tonight. That's all you can do? Midnight Panda Express? Don't forget the most important thing about back to school night. Hide your valuables. <laughs> Box office sensation Marcus Jackson is being prosecuted for his recent mishap with the paparazzi. I find you guilty as charged and order you to teach a class at South Central High School. Hey, what's up, Marcus? 
I was school today. Did you have to tase anybody? Just Cassandra. <laughs> <laughs> but she was still looking for you. <laughs> oh, no. It's from the IRS. <laughs> Dude, you in serious trouble. You're getting audited. <laughs> you keep laughing, player. It's addressed to you. <laughs> Read that. It's 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 probably not that bad. It's it's sad. Dear tax cheater, <laughs> it's that bad. <laughs> we regret to inform you that you are officially being audited. We will be contacting you shortly. Jamal, you did my taxes. You got to stay with me during this audit. I don't know what you told them. All I did was tell them the truth, so there wouldn't be any problems, right, Marcus? Absolutely. Just make sure you say hello to your new cellmate, delicious. <laughs> Buy your tickets to back to school night. Get your Marcus Jackson memorabilia right here. We've got pictures, posters, lunch boxes, and a pair of his personal boxer shorts. Huh? Oh, I'll take a pair of the boxer shorts. I mean, a uh, lunchbox. All right. That'll be uh, $15.95 plus shipping and handling. $27.95. What do I need shipping and handling for? I'm standing right in front of you. Hello. There's a picture of a ship right there. And now I'm handling it to you. Thank you. There will be no change. Action! Name. Really? Okay. Principal Martin? Nope. Not on the list. Uh, you might want to check under my other name. Mr. Let Me In or You're Fired. Oh, here it is, right next to the name You're an Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> What's with this get up? You did like Mr. Rogers in the hood. Actually, this is the wardrobe from one of my movies, Professor Brother May. I'm sorry, you've mistaken me for somebody who actually cares. <laughs> hey, brother, these glasses started a trend. Hmm, yeah, no lenses, fake just like you. Anyways, let's get this thing moving along. I gotta get to my line dancing class. What? Don't judge me. <laughs> okay, uh... Attention, everybody. Let's get things started. I'm glad you guys came out tonight to support your kids, and I wasn't expecting such a great turnout. <laughs> Sir, who's your child? Oh, I don't have any kids. <laughs> who's your child? Never had one. I hope to one day, though. All right. If your child is not in my class, you have to leave right now. Hey, we paid $20 to see you. Yeah, I want my money back. Sorry, no refunds. Let's go. Get it out. Let's get it. Please. Out. Would you sign your boxer shorts? Okay. <sighs> Maria, this must be your mom. Great to meet you. How is my daughter doing in your class? I'm sorry to say she's getting a D. A D. I am so proud of you, me. <laughs> Where are your parents, Danielle? My mom had to work, but my dad wants to talk to you on the phone. I've got him on the line, but don't hang up when you're done. He only gets one phone call. <laughs> oh, the call dropped. Oh, well, guess he'll call back next month. <sighs> Hey, Marcus, come meet Carlos's dad. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, too. Okay. I just wanted to let you know that Carlos is excused for doing homework for the rest of the year. Oh. He can't write anymore. He has carpool funnel cake syndrome. <laughs> okay, all right. First of all, that is the worst disguise I've ever seen. You need to go home and take off that stupid little mustache. You look ridiculous. I have never been so insulted. I don't care if you are a movie star. There is no need to be rude. Grossero. Why are you so mean to my dad? Bobby, wait. He didn't mean it. Christina. Hi. Hey. 
Great to see you again, Herman. Uh, no Herman, no Herman. No. <laughs> I mean, Marcus. Okay, cool. <laughs> you know he changed his name. Mm. He used to be named Herman. <laughs> Would you stop? Your name was Herman? <laughs> oh, that's about as nerdy as my name. <laughs> Herman, Herman. Mil Milton, it's Marcus. All right, all right, Herman. Calm down. <laughs> How do you two know each other? We used to date. Mm -hmm. It was a long time ago. Yes. So did you bring your husband? No. Never been married. Oh. Wow. You used to date my mom? <laughs> Man, that's fantastic. <laughs> no, and I didn't know she was your mom. She was my first serious girlfriend. <laughs> Boy, was I crazy about you back then. Oh, no, I was crazy about you. We were crazy. We were crazy. <laughs> that would have been what? 15? 16, I think. Years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, what a coincidence. That's around the time I was born. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, I never realized how much you two look alike. <laughs> wow, I finally found my, my, my daddy. <laughs> Get line dancing. This is way more fun. <laughs> <laughs>
Milton. Good looking out on that one, man. No problem. Anything I can help you with? Actually, yeah. Are you busy after school? What, you need help with your essay? No, I need help with this. Aw, oh, Milton, that's nothing. I'll sign that for you. Here you go, champ. No, I don't want an autograph. I want you to play catch with me. But I don't have a glove, so you just got to roll it to me. Oh, I got a ton of work to do today, buddy. <clears throat> mm. No one ever wants to play catch with me. It must be tough, huh? Growing up with nobody to play with? It is. You know how hard it is to play dodgeball by yourself? Milton, I'm sorry. I, I got a lot of work to do. I don't have the time. I understand. Okay. I guess I'll just go to the park by myself, get on the seesaw and go down once. <laughs> it's the auditor. What should I do? Calm down. You look guilty. Okay. I'm calm. I'm good. You answer the door. I'm Ms. Franklin from the IRS. Oh, please have mercy on me. Don't lock me up. I'll never do it again. <laughs> Way to stay calm, Tony. What are you talking about? Never do what again? I don't know. Whatever you're here for. I'm just here to ask you a few questions about your return. And who might you be? I'm the one that did his taxes. So if you have any questions, you can run them by me. Hit me with your best shot. Pat Benatar? Really? It's better than Wham. No, it's not. It's so. It's not. It's so. It's not. Hey! <laughs> Mr. Jones, you have thousands of dollars in deductions. Is there a problem with that, Miss Franklin? No, there's no problem with your deductions. The problem is with your income. What's wrong with my income? You don't have any. <laughs> Look, Miss Franklin, I know some people think it's a crime that we sponge off of our friend Marcus, but I don't think it's against the law. No, it's not against the law, but it is demeaning. It's not demeaning. What's the meaning of the meaning? Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, what's Marcus, what's up, man? Oh, my God! It's Marcus Jackson! I am one of your biggest fans! Miss Franklin from the IRS. Oh. It's a pleasure to meet you! <laughs> well, it's nice to meet you, too. So is everything gonna be okay with Tony's tax return? It is now, Mr. Jackson. Now that I know you're involved, we can put this whole thing to bed for good. All right. <laughs> That's great. So that means I get a tax refund? You have to pay taxes to get a tax refund. That's a stupid rule. Thanks for coming by, Miss Franklin. Yeah, thanks, dog. <laughs> You're my main man. <laughs> There's no problem with Mr. Jones's return. But since you prepared his tax return, I have a huge problem with you. The IRS will now be taking a serious look at your tax returns for the past Five years. Oh, man. This is terrible. Yes, it is. <laughs> it was a pleasure meeting you. <laughs> we can begin the proceedings against you immediately. What is your name, sir? Okay, fine. Okay. My name is Bobby Gold. Thank you, Mr. Gold. We'll be hearing from our lawyers shortly. Fine. Then you tell your friends down at the IRS that I'm not afraid of them. I lie and cheat on my taxes just for fun. Here's my business card. Call me when you get a clue. Mr. Gold, you're gonna be hearing from us. Out of my way! <laughs> What's up, Mark? Hey. You hungry? Let's go to dinner. We'll let you pay. <laughs> That's a surprise. No, I can't go anywhere. Bobby's on his way over with the DNA results. If Milton turns out to be your kid, it's not that bad. Yeah, what's really gonna change? Probably nothing. Except, obviously, you guys have to move out. What? Oh, I'm nervous now. Me too. <laughs> oh, that's Bobby now. It can't be. He hasn't rung a doorbell in his life. It's your baby mama and Spike Lee. Hey, Christina and Milton, what are you guys doing here? Well, your agent, Mr. Gold, called and said to come over so we can hear the results of the DNA test. Oh. Yeah, and I just want you to know, you don't have to feel guilty about being a deadbeat dad all these years. To make up for lost time, I compiled a list of all the gift-giving events you missed in my life. Milton, stop. All right, hey, come on, don't worry about that. Slow down, player. We got plenty of time for that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have the results of the DNA test. Right here in my hand is superstar actor Marcus Jackson 
the father of this young, undernourished child? <laughs> we'll find out right after these messages. Bobby, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just always wanted to do that. Well, you've done it. Please get out. This needs to be a private moment. Private moments would got you into this predicament in the first place. <laughs> Come on, guys, let's give them their privacy. We'll eavesdrop at the door. Good idea. <laughs> All right, here it goes. Milton, I just want you to know I'll always be there for you. <laughs> but this says you're not his dad. Oh, you're not my dad. Oh, that doesn't matter. Hey, I'm your teacher, I'm your friend, and I'll always be there for you, Milton. Really? Yeah. Promise? <laughs> Absolutely. When I make a friend, it's a friend for life. That's true. <laughs> That sounds good. Can I have all your video games? No. Sure you can. We hate you. In the meantime, I got a surprise for you, buddy. Here you go. Thanks. This is cool. <laughs> How about a game of catch? That'd be great. Is this heaven? No, it's Beverly Hills. <laughs> Christina, you want to come join us? I'd love to. <laughs> and thank you, Marcus. You've always been a class act. Oh, come on, let's go have fun. <laughs> I got shortstop. I got second base. <laughs> so, there you have it. Marcus Jackson is not the father of Milton the Dweeb. Join us tomorrow when we devote a full hour to cross-dressing rabbis and the Gentiles who love them. <laughs> Don't change that dial, we'll be right back. Oh, I great at this, I gotta get myself an agent. <laughs> ah, I'm the father. <laughs> Kidding, we'll be right back. What am I signing here, Bobby? Sign here. And here, and here. Yes, congratulations. I am now your agent for the next two years. After all this time, why am I signing a contract that says you get 10% of my money? Uh, actually, you're getting 90% of my money. But if you must know, it protects me. From who? From people like me. Well, what's this other thing I signed? What's this? Oh, that's just a boilerplate. It's nothing. You bought me a yacht. A yacht? Are you crazy and a crew? Hello? I don't know how to drive a yacht. <laughs> Last call for lottery pool. Who wants to dive in? You get it? I get it. I get it. I don't get it. The lottery is for sad losers looking for a quick fix to their pathetic lives. <laughs> Count me in. There you go. Ew. You don't know where that bill has been. That bill doesn't know where she's been. <laughs> Keep laughing, and you'll know where my foot has been. What's that for, Freddy? All the teachers pull their money together and buy a bunch of lottery tickets. If any ticket wins, we all split it. The jackpot is almost $3 million, and the drawing is tonight. Well, that sounds like fun. You know what? Put me in for two. Yeah. One for me, and since Bobby's here, one for him. And if we win, you can get your own yacht. No, 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 no. You, trust me. You do not want me in your lottery pool. I am bad luck. That's ridiculous. There's no such thing as bad luck. No, I'm telling you, I'm cursed. Trust me, you want to win that lottery, count me out. Fine. One ticket for me. Hey, Marcus, uh, some of the teachers get together at my place for the drawing. You should come by. It's not far, it's two blocks away. I get to walk to work. You walk in this neighborhood? <laughs> you got a better chance of winning that lottery than making it back to your front porch. That's ridiculous. This neighborhood isn't that bad. Let's have it at my place. Well, we wouldn't want to impose on you. Speak for yourself, Claire Huxtable. I'll be there at seven. Heat up the hot tub, chocolate star. Box office sensation Marcus Jackson is being prosecuted for his recent mishap with the paparazzi. I find you guilty as charged and order you to teach a class at South Central High School. Let's do it.
do it. I can't believe Marx didn't get us a lottery ticket too. What are you two complaining about? You don't work and you live in a mansion in Beverly Hills. You already won the lottery. <laughs> These chicken wings are a bit dry. You know you don't have to eat them. Come on now, let's not get crazy. Well, I think that we all owe Marcus a big thank you for inviting us into his beautiful home. Although, let's face it, this place could use a woman's touch. I know what else could use a woman's touch. Me. Walk away now, and you get to keep your face. You like me. You're thinking about my face. Okay, okay, it's starting. All right, everybody get your sheets and look for that winning number. And remember, guys, whether we win or lose, this is just for fun. No! Pipe down, rich man. <laughs> Some of us have boots on layaway. And tonight's winning lottery numbers are 2, 13, 20, 12, 8, and 11. What are we jumping up and down for? We didn't win anything. I'm jumping up and down so Cassandra can keep jumping up and down. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy I can hug some of you. <laughs> Not that happy. You know what? This is such a blessing, but we really ought to take a moment and thank... Bobby Gold. What are you talking about? Thank you for what? Because of my bad luck, if I'd let you buy me a lottery ticket, you never would have won. Therefore, everyone in this room owes me 20% of their winnings. 10%. Five. Okay, we'll keep talking. Forget we'll Bobby, everybody. We won! Now everybody that I loan money to can finally pay me back! I was just kidding. <laughs> okay, lottery office opens on Monday. I'll take the ticket down there and get our checks. Woo! You're gonna take a winning lottery ticket into your neighborhood? Even I would mug you. I hate to admit it, Freddie, but Bobby's right. Probably the safest place for the ticket is here with me. Okay. Guys, I know that this is really exciting, but no matter how much we win, we can't let this money change us. Oh, please. Money doesn't change you. You don't deserve it. Wow. I still can't believe that we won the lottery. Yeah. I'm rich. I want to do something fun with my money, like travel the world. Hey. Yeah. Did somebody say money? I got some of that. Oh. Hey, Kool-Aid. Should you be breaking through a wall somewhere? <laughs> oh, yeah. This suit is custom tailored, hater. I also got one in purple and canary yellow. Well, thanks for warning me. I'll be getting all my jokes ready. <laughs> Hello, fellow winners. Hey. Ooh, nice suit. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Freddie. It's good to see someone's not spending their money looking like Elmo. I heard that. <laughs> How could you hear me when your suit's so loud? <laughs> no, no. I don't blow my money on stupid things. I'm putting in a swimming pool. Don't you live in an apartment? Yeah, but the landlord's totally cool with it. <laughs> Good morning, my lovelies. Please tell me no animal lost its life for that coat. No! This coat is 100% imitation fox fur. At least not everyone's gone crazy. But the lining is 24 karat gold. Bam! <laughs> well, I spoke too soon. What's with the chariot? Are you supposed to be that dude from that movie, Ben-Hur? No, I'm the dude from that movie, Chariots of You're Fired. I, I'm sorry I missed that movie. Marcus, I just came to make sure you're gonna go pick up that lottery check today. I ordered an exotic bird, but the guy only takes cash. What are you getting, a parakeet? No, just one. Look, it's old kids on the block. Yeah, don't hate. Uh, 
<laughs> we jam. Boy. Is this what you guys been doing all day? Nope, that would be a waste of time. Yeah, we also had lunch and took a nap. Well, at least it's good that you guys are being productive, but I came home to get the lottery ticket so I can cash it in today. Yeah, for everybody but us. Come on, Jamar, these teachers need the money. They're struggling. We have money. You got money. We're struggling. <laughs> yeah, Marcus, we're out of bread. I had to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich today with a taco shell. <laughs> See, if we were part of that lottery ticket, we would never run out of bread. Never. Did you look in the bread box? I didn't know we had a bread box. Yeah, it's the box with the bread in it. You hiding food now? Hey, the lottery ticket's not in the safe. Gosh, you weren't in the safe, were you? No. How could we open it? We'd have to know that your combination's your birthday. You didn't put it in the safe anyway. Remember, you said that'd be the first place a burglar would look. Yeah, you said you put it somewhere nobody would find you. That's right. But I didn't think that no one would include me. You know what, in all this excitement, I forgot where I put it. But you know what, I need you guys to help me find it. I'm sorry, you must have mistaken us for lottery winners. I'm not a lottery winner. Tony, are you a lottery winner? I'm not a lottery winner, I'm a Gemini. <laughs> Give us one good reason we should help you look, Marcus. Okay, if you help me, I'll share my winnings with you. That's good enough for me. That works. <laughs> I found it! I found it, y'all! Yay! You've been looking all over for this. You wanted that a carnival. Focus, Tony, focus. We gotta find that ticket, man. And if we can, I gotta go down to the school and tell everyone that I ruined their lives. If you do that, you're gonna lose your life. Yeah, you're right. Tony, you go tell him. <laughs> Okay, look, I know everybody's excited, but let's not mob Marcus when he gets here with the check. Okay. Right. Just keep it cool. Just hey, relax. Marcus! Marcus! Hey, hey. Ow, ow, ow. Take it easy, man. I think you just broke a bone. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm just so psyched to put my pool slide in today. It goes from my window to the deep end, and I live on the third floor. Oh, Freddie, leave it up to you to buy something you don't really need. Have y'all seen my earrings? They are made of actual dinosaur bones. Ta-da! I got two words for you. I'm crazy rich. You need to invest in a calculator. Yeah, and some taste, big bird. Listen up, everybody. I got some bad news. I don't know how to say it, so I'm just gonna say it. I lost the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they say you're a bad actor. I'm not acting, guys. I can't find it. I, I just can't remember where I put it. Stop playing, Marcus. That's not funny. Hey, Marcus, I'm into that Birdman for 20 large, and the Birdman don't play. Ooh, if I didn't just get a $300 manicure, I would squash your head. I never left the ticket with him. You don't need the money. What do you care if the ticket's gone? It's yeah. not like that. I do care. I can fix it. I promise you guys, I will find that ticket. I can honestly say that right now, you have lost all your swagger. <laughs> and, and you're not invited to my pool party. Freddie. I guess I'll go sell my kidney in order to pay for my exotic birds. Thank you. He can fix this. Fix this now. You and me, after school, bike racks. Man, how hard could it be for you to put a corn nut in your mouth? So I missed one. One. This is disgusting. It looks like they've been here five years. Is that mold or is it growing a beard? Oh, that's an afro. No, you're right. It's a beard. Man, what are you doing? We got, we got bigger problems. We got to find this ticket. Hey, guys, 
Marcus just told me he lost the lottery ticket. Have you found it? Not yet. We can't find it anywhere. Well, you better find it, because you know Marcus. He'll pay those leechers, I, I mean, the teachers, out of his own pocket. Man, that's about $3 million. I know. Oh, I feel faint. Catch me, but don't touch me. Oh, I warned him. It's all my fault. I told him I was cursed. Look, Bobby, you're not cursed. You represent the biggest movie star in the world. Exactly. And what is he doing now? Teaching. Oh, I feel faint again. My blood sugar level. I'm gonna faint. Corn nuts, perfect. Mmm, these are delicious. What are they seasoned with? The plague. Really? But it tastes like chicken. Here, have the whole Ebola. Look, the bottom line, Bobby, is there's no such thing as bad luck or curses. It's all a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Oh, really? My Aunt Leona, she lives in the bayou. She caught my uncle cheating on her. She put a mojo on him, shrunk his head, made it real tiny. Now he wears a toothpaste cap for a hat. <laughs> Quit exaggerating, Tony. Oh, you think I'm exaggerating? Go down there and ask for little hair Larry and see what happens. <laughs> Look, Bobby, bad luck is just a figment of your imagination. Watch. Watch what? No, 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 don't do it. I have bad luck. See? That's bad. Dude. Nothing. I'm plump. No. I... <coughs> oh, ha. he passed the reins. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, it's a book. Um, it's a movie. It's a movie. Uh, a movie. uh Jaws. <laughs> okay, not Jaws. Look, you turned it blue. Uh, the Blues Brothers. Blues Clue. Uh, uh, Blue Man Group. Blue E. Armstrong. <laughs> really, Tony? Blue E. Armstrong? Yeah, he blew E. A mean horn. <laughs> The Grateful Dead! The Grateful Dead! Okay, I'm confused. I'm confused. Bob, you suck at this game, man. <coughs> oh, you idiots! I was choking! It's charades. This is choking. No, I was really choking. So why are you playing charades? Just tell us you're choking. I couldn't. I was really choking. I told you I'm bad luck. No, that wasn't bad luck. That was bad chewing. That could have happened to anybody. <gasps> Tony, call Aunt Leona. We need to get rid of that bad mojo. Is everything in there? I got everything in here. My Aunt Leona said that Bobby needs to get rid of his bad luck. I got a uh, weak old pickle juice, tree bark, two grasshoppers, and a pound of spinach. Yeah, I hate spinach. <laughs> okay, what's left? Okay, now we need, uh, Bobby, what's in your hand? Where? What'd you poke me for? I needed some shark's blood. Why'd you just ask? Oh, this whole thing is stupid. I'm not drinking that stuff. Come on, Bubba, you have to. My aunt says the only thing that's gonna shake your bad luck. Yeah, I agree with the man and his crazy head shrinking aunt. Drink up, <laughs> bon appetit. I'm not drinking that stuff. My luck isn't that bad. Ah, oh, I was almost shish kebabby. Give me that stuff. Mm. Oh, I gotta get that taste out of my mouth. Oh my god. Oh. Uh. oh my god! Is that the lottery ticket? Yeah. Yeah, that's the ticket. <laughs> I cannot believe Marcus hid that in a cereal box. I told you my Aunt Leona was a genius. Now your bad luck's gone, Bobby. I'm gonna call Marcus and tell him the good news. Or we could just cash it and go to Mexico. <laughs> I'm joking. Joking. Uh, joking? <laughs> joking. I can't believe he made us stay after school to wait for him. I know. What does he think we are, 12 years old? <laughs> he is so immature, but I got him back. I wrote Marcus Stinks on the bathroom wall. Are you defacing school property? No, I didn't draw a face. Just some words. You think you're mad at him? There's only one reason that I'm walking instead of driving around on a two-wheel futuristic vehicle, and that's Marcus. And I wrapped it around a tree. Okay, look. Marcus messed up pretty bad.
But look at what winning that money has turned us into. It's made us greedy, self-centered. We even bought ridiculous clothing. Don't listen to her, Principal Martin. I like your tie. <laughs> is that money made me into a person that I don't want to be. I'd rather keep my dignity and self-respect than be rich. Hey, we found the lottery ticket. We got the money. Oh. <laughs> Give it to me before you lose it again. Well, well actually, I don't have it. Huh? Hold up. You came here to tell us that? Coach, lock the door. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Freddie's got the ticket. He and Bobby went to the lottery office to get our checks. Why didn't you go? Because I wanted to deliver the good news myself. And Freddie didn't trust me with the ticket. Why did Bobby go? Because Bobby didn't trust Freddie with the ticket. <laughs> got the lottery checks. Oh, <laughs> and Bobby, I got a surprise for you. I went behind your back and bought you a ticket as well. So all that bad luck stuff was just in your head. Oh, and I thought I was the only sneaky one in this relationship. <laughs> Let's see those checks. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. This check is for $46.72. Mine, too. I'm not good at math, but that don't sound like I'm rich. You're not. My check is missing a whole lot of zeros, too. What's up with that? Unfortunately, we didn't check the box for the lump sum payout. So after you divide it amongst all the teachers, all we get is a $46 check every month for the next 30 years. I don't understand. How did this get so screwed up? Man, it's like we're cursed. Yeah, somebody around here is really bad luck. Don't look at me. <laughs> Out of my way! Hello, everybody. It's that special time of year again. It's time for the Golden Apple Award. Oh. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. With your acting ability, I guess you're not familiar with awards. Oh. It's an award that's given each year to South Central's best teacher. Oh, that's cool. So what does the winner of the Golden Apple Awards get? A job at a new school? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You wish. The winner of the Golden Apple Award gets an award that looks like a golden apple. Here's the sign-up sheet. You should sign up, Marcus. You could totally win. Oh, I don't think so, Freddie. This looks like this is for teachers that have been here for a while. Actually, it's probably for the best anyway. I know what fragile egos you actors have, and I'd hate to see you fall apart after you lost. Is somebody talking trash? Oh, not just somebody. She's won the Golden Apple three times in a row. Oh. Actually, four. But who's counting? Oh, is that so? Well, I won the Golden Globes four times in a row. Google that. <laughs> really? No. Well, unlike your Golden Globe, the Golden Apple actually means something. Oh, well, sign me up, British. Box office sensation Marcus Jackson is being prosecuted for his recent mishap with the paparazzi. I find you guilty as charged and order you to teach a class at South Central High School. Guys, look at this mess. I'm tired of this place looking like a dump. I thought I asked you guys to hire a new housekeeper. We have some interviews set up for later. Try to hire somebody good this time. The last housekeeper you hired took my Ferrari. You told us you could take the car to run some errands. Taking my car to the chop shop is not an errand. Seriously, fellas, don't mess this up. I warned you about the online dating. I don't do floors. <laughs> and I don't clean on any day that ends in Y. <laughs> you close that door, I'm gonna knock the wall out your head and it takes out your mouth. <laughs> Hello, 
Hi, Miss Abella. I'm here for the housekeeper position. Come on in. I'm Jamal. This is Tony. So nice to meet you guys. Okay, so Isabella, maybe you can tell us something about yourself. Mm -hmm. You got a resume, right? No. You have any references? No. Isabella, have you ever done this job before? No. Oh, well. Well, I guess there's nothing left to say except... <sighs> when can, can you, you start? start? <laughs> okay, everybody settle down or you'll have detention today. So we already got detention. Okay, fine. Then I'll send you home early so you can spend time with your families. Good. Now, as you all know, the Golden Apple will be awarded this week. And our four nominees have been going from room to room, pretending to care about you in order to get your vote. So, without further ado, teachers, let the sucking up begin. Hi, I'm Miss Owens, four-time defending champion of the Golden Apple Award. That's four times in a row. <laughs> Let me break that down for you. That's me, then me, then me, then... Wait for it, me! <laughs> Y'all know me. I teach the hard stuff at South Central. P.E. Vote for me, or I will make dodgeball your worst nightmare. <laughs> you see this ball? Vote for me, or this ball will find your face. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marcus Jackson. Need I say more? <laughs> Hi, I'm Miss Washington. And I have been a teacher here for 10 stellar years. And during that time, I haven't received a single vote from any student. <laughs> Which begs the question, <laughs> what in the world is wrong with you kids? <laughs> you see, it's been proven that I'm the kind of teacher that will help your grades soar. Hey, you know what rhymes with soar? Four! <laughs> Look, I never drop names, but I once said to Denzel, I said, Denzi, always trust your instincts, player, even when it's your instinct not to trust your instinct. And I bet old Denzi would love to come down and say hello to my kids. <laughs> That's only if I win, of course. I mean, sure. I'm not the best teacher here. I don't always stay awake during class. Sometimes I may have more than coffee in my coffee cup. But not one single vote in 10 years? Really? Science lab, study hall, your wedding day. I mean, the ball will find your face. I mean, I can't tell you when. I can't say where. But what I do know is the ball will find your face. Here's the bottom line. If I win, I will give one lucky student a brand new iPad. Yeah. <laughs> Charger. Vote wisely. Hey, Bobby, what do you think of my campaign buttons? Well, I, I think they're terrific if you're campaigning for lamest campaigner of the year. Listen, if people get wind that you lost a silly high school popularity contest, your career's in trouble. What are you talking about? You remember when you lost the People's Choice Award for that ridiculous movie where you play an assassin who moonlights as a hairdresser? You mean Frizzy Zana? It took me months to convince the studios your career wasn't over. Well, I'm not gonna lose. How can you be so sure? Hello? Marshmallow treats! Bobby, relax, I got this. That's exactly what you said when you auditioned for Men in Black. What'd you just say? I said I got your back. Exactly. <laughs> Chill out, Bobby. I'm going to win this thing. Miss Owen is the best. Vote for her and forget the rest. She has four, but she needs more. Go, Miss Owens! Woo! Wow, Miss Owens, I'm definitely voting for you. See? It found you. 
Still think you can win this thing? Don't worry about it. I think she's peaked. <laughs> hey, guys. Miss Owens got the USC marching band. No way. You have got to be kidding me. Let's go check it out. What are we gonna do? This lady's taking it to the next level. Well, I wouldn't say that. It's more like four levels. See, you're way down here. And she's like, well, let me get on okay, this chair. Okay, okay, I get it. She's like way up I get it. You need to step it up. You're right. Maybe I should make peanut butter marshmallow treats instead. I'm not talking about peanut butter marshmallow treats, although those do sound good. Mark, your campaign is in serious trouble. Okay, look. Just because we're behind doesn't mean anything. The fat lady hasn't sung yet. You leave my ex-wife out of this. <laughs> Time to bring out the big guns, baby. Ha! We're in the entertainment business. If there's one thing we know how to do is get the public's attention. Oh, I know exactly what to do. Hey, but Bobby, we gotta keep it clean. Oh, fine. I'll think of something else. <laughs> I know what we should do. I know exactly what she needs. A little dose of reality. Reality show editing, that is. <laughs> What's going on in here? This is for you. I go with the winner. It's very clear you're going to win that Golden Apple Award. In fact, I was so impressed with your campaign, I've decided that you would be perfect to star in my new reality series, Real Teachers of South Central. You're going to do a reality show about us? Oh, not us, honey. You. My not-so-nutty professor. It's gonna be the start of a huge series. I can see it now. Real teachers of Atlanta, real teachers of Beverly Hills, and you, my dear, will be the face of the franchise. That is a great idea. Well then, have a seat. Let's show the world your golden apples. Excuse me? Figuratively speaking, of course. All right, let's just start with something simple. Please direct all your answers to the camera. <clears throat> uh, what is your name? I'm Samantha Owens. Good. Do you approve of the president's stance on education? Absolutely, I approve of it. Oh, wait, my, my voice won't be in the piece, so you need to make it very clear for the viewer. So just say, I approve of this message. Okay. I approve of this message. <laughs> How do you feel about the students here? I love the students of South Central High. They are so imaginative. You know, okay, that's enough. What do you hate? Well, I hate teachers who don't give it their all. Perfect. Uh, why do you think education is so important? Not having a good education is like being in jail. You have nowhere to go. I guarantee that my students will all end up doing well in life. Oh, and finally, does this milk smell bad to you? Very much. Wait, th that's it? You got everything you need? Oh, yeah, we have more than enough. <laughs> Isabella, you missed a spot. Where? Right there. Oops, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Isabella, did you sweep over here? Uh, I did, but I can do it again if you want. I would love it. Isabella, did you wash the dishes? Yes. Really? You know you're supposed to wash the inside, too. Wow, you guys are such neat freaks. Oh, look at the time. My shift just ended. I'll get to that tomorrow. Bye, guys. Man, we gotta get a maid to clean up after the maid. All right. The assignment was to memorize Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. Who did it? I had a dream I did. <laughs> and to quote Dr. King, a person should be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their campaign commercial. Campaign commercial? When you dragged me out of my class, you said we were gonna watch our new reality show. Here's your dose of reality. Kids, the election is tomorrow. Before you vote, watch this. Marcus Jackson, 
You cheered for him when he saved the planet from aliens in Freedom Day. And you rooted for him when he took a team of chimpanzees to the World Series in Prime Eight Men Out. And now you can vote for him. Vote Marcus Jackson for the Golden Apple Award. But whatever you do, don't vote for Samantha Owens. She wants you to think she's all sugar and spice. But when you look closer, there's nothing nice. I'm Samantha Owens. I hate the students of South Central High. My students will all end up in jail doing life. Whoa! Vote for Marcus Jackson and make him head of the class. Don't let this rotten apple win the golden apple. I'm Samantha Owens. I approve of this message. Ta-da! <laughs> Bobby, I don't know what to say. I do. You're despicable. Thank you. <laughs> Bobby, that's terrible that you didn't think it is sooner. <laughs> Well, Mr. J, we're changing our vote. Yeah. We're voting for you. Yeah. Don't even think about it. So, I heard the Golden Apple Award just went dirty. Did you see it? Saw it. And I posted it on the internet. It's gotten two million hits already. Gee, thanks. You're being attacked, Samantha. Now, you can sit there and feel sorry for yourself, or you can call down the thunder. What thunder? Me. I know more ways to get back at a man than you'd ever want to know. I'll make him sorry he was ever born. Cassandra, this fight is over. Maybe I went a little too far. A little? You brought in the USC marching band. All right, I went too far. Here's the bottom line. You're the best teacher at this school and always have been. Before you know it, Marcus will be back making movies and you'll be right here. Earning next to no money, working long, thankless hours, and teaching students who don't even appreciate you. I'm so glad you're cheering me up. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Sandra, the truth is, it isn't just about winning. I like receiving the award because it validates what I've dedicated my entire life to, making a difference in these kids' lives. Now, I know I'm not a movie star, but if I can just help one student reach their full potential, then it's all been worth it. You're so sweet. But the only way to help these kids is to give them bail money. Man, I'm exhausted. I've been cleaning rooms I didn't know we even had. I feel so bad just sitting here while you guys are cleaning. Is there anything I can do? Well, you can move your pretty little feet. But I'm so comfy. Do I have to? I work around you. <laughs> Fellas, what's up? Hey, Marcus. Hey. Hi. Who are you? I'm Isabella, the housekeeper. Oh, you look more like the house sitter. <laughs> hey, fellas, if she's the housekeeper, why are you doing all the cleaning? Shh. We know she's not perfect. We know she got the cleanest skills of a Band-Aid. But look how beautiful she looks when she's trying to clean. <laughs> We have the vote totals, and it is very close. All right, last chance, people, just making sure that you all voted, too. Teachers get to vote? Yeah. And remember, you can vote for yourself. What? Yeah, I voted for myself. OK, that's it. The winner of the Golden Apple Award is uh, Samantha Owen. <laughs> Congratulations. Two words, recount. Where to begin? Oh, okay. This morning, when I woke up, I looked at my diabetic cat, and I said to her, today is gonna be a good day. You know what? It'll be an even better day when you stop talking. Okay, everybody, let's get back to class and do what you do best. Give your students false hope. <sighs> Congratulations. It looks like the best teacher won. Thank you. <laughs> And I'm really sorry about that campaign ad. Oh, that's okay. I mean, you weren't the only one who let your competitive nature get the best of you. 
But I'm warning you, the campaign for next year's Golden Apple Award starts today, and I'm coming for you. <laughs> Bring it on. All right. <laughs> so you voted for her, huh? What are you talking about? Well, it was all tied up until you cast your vote. Yeah, well, she's a great teacher, and this school needs more Samanthas. You know, this is really hard for me to say, but maybe you're all right. Wow, thank you. <laughs> Are we having a moment, Principal Martin? No, I still don't like you. Get out of my office. What happened to Isabella? She never came back after lunch. I fired her. What? You can't fire her. We need her. This place is a mess. See? Why'd you fire her? I fired her because she can't clean. Oh. That's no reason to fire the cleaning lady. Don't worry, fellas. I hired a new maid. She's perfect. And she'll be here in a minute. Oh, man, this is terrible. I know. Who's going to sit around and watch us clean now? Man, he should have said something to us first. Ooh. What are you doing here? I'm Midge. I'm your new housekeeper. Oh, man. All right, fine. Go on in. I start over here. No! Ah! Man, I don't get it. Marcus said she was perfect. Perfect for what? Perfect for breathing fire and terrorizing Tokyo. <laughs> Mr. Jackson told me what big slobs you two were. So hope you don't mind. I brought my daughters to help me. Oh no! There's more of you. <laughs> Guys, get in here. Oh, man. Mind. <laughs> We don't mind at all. <laughs> you must take after your dad. Good morning, everyone. Hey. Martha, look what I brought. My famous homemade banana bread. Ooh. Who wants a slice? Cassandra. Sorry, Samantha. Uh, I'm on a strict diet. Yeah, no sugar, no carbs, no poison. You know what? I'll take a slice. Okay. Is it supposed to have that gray and fussy stuff like that? Oh, just eat around that part. Okay, <laughs> let's get a little piece. All right, all right. Yeah, come on, Marcus, don't take an itty bitty bite. Take a man-sized bite. You like it? Good morning, everyone. Hey, Principal Martin. Principal Martin, banana bread. Ugh, just when I thought my day couldn't get any worse. No loitering. If you're gonna stand around doing nothing, do it where you normally do it, in your classrooms. Hey, 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 what's up with the trumpet? Ugh. Okay, spill it. What's going on with the trophy? Yeah, yeah. what's up? Well, if you really must know, I was just humiliated at the statewide principals conference. Look at the inscription. South Central High, the most cheatingest school of the year. Ooh. Once again, our students were caught cheating more than any other school in the whole state. They're trying to embarrass us into improving. We got to do something to fix this school once and for all. Now, I tried, but the sprinkler system put it out before the fire could spread. Seriously, what are we going to do? I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this over there with the other three. <sighs> you know, from back here, it looks like something that we should be proud of. Rock the sensation Marcus Jackson is being prosecuted for his recent mishap with the paparazzi. I find you guilty as charged and order you to teach a class at South Central High School. not believe all the dumb stuff you can order in these catalogs. Like this right here. Talking golf clubs. <laughs> Why use a caddy if the club can suggest itself? And with that price, is it hit the ball for you? No, 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 no. Look at this right here. This is real stupid. <laughs> Massage robe. Let our vibrating robe relax you all day long. <laughs> what kind of idiot would buy that? <laughs> Do you hear something? Mm -mm. Tony, are you cold? Because you're shaking. No, I'm not cold. Wait, it's your robe. 
Did you buy one of those? It was a good deal. I'll get it. Well, hello. Hi, you have a special delivery? If it's from you, it must be special. <laughs> Are you Jamal? I'll be anybody you want me to be. I'm Jamal. Oh, I'm Kelly. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Here's my name. <laughs> and here's my number. <laughs> Just your name's fine. <laughs> Whatever. I'm Tony. All right. <laughs> well, better be going. Hey, am I going to see you again? Sure. Whenever I deliver something. Mm -hmm. Or if you need to return something, just give me a call. <laughs> Will do. Hey. <laughs> Did you see she was flirting with me? She gave me her number. Dude, that's the company's number. That's right. She wants my company. Besides, she was flirting with me. She was checking out the kid. <laughs> you haven't been a kid since E.T. phoned home. Did you hear what she said? Anytime I need her, she'll deliver? She's a delivery person. Which reminds me, I need to order a heated dog bed. But we don't own a dog. Do you want to see her again or not? Get one in every color. Hey, what's going on here? I came up with an idea to keep the students from cheating. South Central High now has an official honor code. It's a way to show the students we have faith in them, and by signing this document, they are pledging their honesty. Please, how can you sign your name if you can't spell your name? <laughs> we won cheating in school four years in a row, and you want to ruin it? Yeah, I call that a dynasty. Well, I think an honor code is a great idea. Thank you. Uh, well, what happens if they're not honest? Well, some would say that the guilt you feel from ruining your good name is the worst punishment of all. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, what really happens? Well, you will go before the honor board. If they find you guilty, you have to abide by that punishment. Now you're talking. I have a wooden paddle in my office from the good old days. Yeah, <laughs> good old days. What are you talking about? You weren't there. I have socks older than you. And jokes, too. <laughs> Listen up, everybody, for the honor code to work. All the teachers have to sign it, too, starting with me. Put down that pen. I'm not signing anything till I review it first. Let's see. Oof! Out. Out. Get away out. Hey, where's the fine print in this thing? How can you have a loophole if you don't have any fine print? Bobby, you actually have taken all the honor out of the honor code. You're welcome. This is a waste of time. The only honor these kids know works at a courthouse, and his first name is Your. Oh, you actually ordered those talking golf clubs? <laughs> That's cool, dude. Yeah, man. I kind of liked them until they started dissing me. Watch this. You're 12 miles from the green. You need a wood and a car, <laughs> moron. <laughs> Check this out. You again. Thank God, tennis loser. <laughs> those clubs are as useful as that stupid shark cage. Are you crazy? You know I always wanted to study a great white up close. Only thing you want to study up close is Kelly, Tony. Not correct. Look what she left me. A love note at the door. She's sorry she missed me. Says she want me to wait for her tomorrow between 8 and 5. Booyah! <laughs> Kelly appreciates a brother with brains. Why would she want you? So what you... So what you saying? I'm not smart? Well, you did think this was a love note. It's a pickup notice, Tony. That's what I'm saying. She wants to pick me up. You are so pathetic. Whatever. Next time I see Kelly, I'm asking her out. Not if I see her first. <laughs> hey, babe, how about we get together Saturday? Oh, wonderful. We're always looking for volunteers at the soup kitchen. <laughs> I'm sorry, we don't take Monopoly money. Principal Martin, can I help you? Oh, no, I just came by to soak up the ambiance in here. <laughs> hey, that's one of our spelling words. Who can use that in a sentence? Ambiance. I can. Ambiance says biggest fan. <laughs> you make me so proud. <laughs> oh, 
Anyways, it's standardized test time again. That wonderful time of the year where we get to see how poorly our students compare to every other kid in the state. The test answers are in this envelope. I want you to guard it. Why me? Because you're Mr. Honor Code, and you're the only teacher here who's made enough money. You can't be bought. No, why don't you guard it? I can be bought. Guys, I just ran into the delivery girl with another box. Man, I was supposed to sign for this. Now we're not going to see her until tomorrow. Man, you guys are doing way too much. You really need a spoon that tells you the temperature of your food? Yes, I do. It also doubles as a barometer, so I know if it's going to rain. You're right, Marcus. That spoon is stupid. Unlike these. Really? Man, those noise-canceling headphones do not work. Yes, they do. No, they don't. I said, yes, they do. No, they don't. Yes, they do. I, I, I don't get it. Why are you ordering all this stuff? Because Kelly and I are building a relationship, one package at a time. Wait a minute. Both you guys like Kelly, the delivery lady? The girl we were talking to outside? Yeah, but you guys, Kelly is pretty hot. Yes. And she showed us a picture of her roommate, Carrie. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, Carrie. Sizzling. How does Carrie look? Tall and athletic. Mm. Uh, used to be a model. Swimsuit. <laughs> hey, next time Kelly drops by, why don't you ask her if she and Carrie want a double date? Let's do it. <laughs> Uh-oh. What? Fellas, we got to get in the basement. According to the spoon, there's a hurricane coming. You have a basement? No. All this money and no basement? <laughs> Come on, fellas. Don't just sit there. Let's dig. We got to dig. Dig. Honor board is now in session. Camille, you are accused of plagiarism. How do you plead? Like this. Uh, please let me go. I'll be grounded for like a month. Guilty. You're sentenced to clean the graffiti off the school walls. I object. I haven't even had a chance to present her defense. There is no defense. She got this report off the internet. Excuse me, she's innocent until proven guilty. The bottom reads Wikipedia. Fine, guilty. Man. You call that a defense? I haven't seen a defense that bad since I saw this guy play basketball. Excuse me? Yeah, I saw the tapes. Mm. Well, we're done with the students. Only one student broke the honor code. I told you it works. It may have worked for the students, but not for the teachers. Ms. Washington, you're up first. This is ridiculous. The only law that I've broken is the law of gravity. Ba bam <laughs> Ms. Washington, you are accused of lying. Prosecution, please proceed. Ms. Washington, you were overheard today claiming you were 27 years old. But I am 27-ish. <laughs> My client has absolutely no reason to lie. She understands that men aren't shallow. They appreciate experience and maturity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> how old are you? Well, I'm 27-ish. Guilty. Fine. If I'm going down, then you're all going down with me. Coach <laughs> dyes his hair and lies about it. I do not. This is all me, baby. Let us see your hands, Coach. <laughs> Guilty. And Samantha, our dear, sweet, innocent Samantha. You've been faking sick the last Friday of every month. Ooh. What are you talking about? I followed you last Friday. You weren't sick. You were at the downtown mission feeding the homeless. I'm trying to do something good for society. Sorry, Mother Teresa. <laughs> Guilt. And don't think you're going to get off so easy, Mr. Honor Code. Tell me what you think about Samantha's banana bread. Banana bread? Mm-hmm. I told her that it is moist and delicious. Mm. That's right. He loves my banana bread. In fact, I made you an entire loaf, Marcus. You just walk around with banana bread? <laughs> Perfect! 
Eat it, Marcus. I will eat this banana bread, okay? After I clean the graffiti off the walls. Hold that, Bobby. Oh. <laughs> guilty, guilty, guilty. I have to say, I am disappointed. Shame on you teachers for setting such a bad example for your students. This court is adjourned. All rise. Uh, are you stealing toilet paper from the janitor's closet? You weren't supposed to see that. Guilty, guilty, guilty! Marcus, this honor code is a disaster. Look on the bright side, at least the walls will be clean. Get a life. Yo, Mr. J. Hey. Yo, I'm sorry my phone went off in class today, mm -hmm. but um, can I get it back now? Yeah, it's in my top desk drawer, and next time, keep it on silent. When I'm talking about the diary of Anne Frank, I don't want to be interrupted by Baby Got Back. <laughs> I found it. I found it too. Those are the answers to the standardized test. I know. I enjoyed reading everyone's essays. Milton's, yours was especially creative. Really? Yeah. Then why did I get an F? Well, Lord of the Flies has a lot of great characters. Spider-Man isn't one of them. Ah. <laughs> uh. I would have not, but I know I'm not interrupting anything important. Well, we got the results back from the standardized tests. Okay. This class did very well. Whoa! 20% improvement over last year. Yay! Yay! That's great news. No, it's more like suspicious news. These children of the corn could not have possibly improved that much. I think they cheated. What? Wait a minute. Shh. Principal Martin, I can prove that my kids did not cheat. I put the test answers in my desk, and the envelope is still sealed. Exactly. I don't even know what's in there. <sighs> what's wrong? The envelope. It's not in here. What a surprise. It's obvious what's happened here. I'm really disappointed in you guys. Here I am, bragging about how everyone's following the honor code, and you make me look like a fool. You gotta let us defend ourselves. Yeah, wasn't that the whole purpose of the honor board? Fine, you can use your little honor board, but if you're found guilty, you won't be cleaning graffiti off the walls. You'll be out of here forever. Okay, I call this honor board to order. To assist the prosecution, I decided to bring in someone who was cutthroat, vicious, and nasty. Uh, out of my way! Ow! Oh. Sorry I'm late, everybody. I was busy checking my briefs. Get it? It's a little courtroom humor. <laughs> all right, let's go on with it. You're all going down! Order! Order in the court. I have a cheeseburger and fries. Uh, bailiff, could you please remove the doofus from the court? But I am the bailiff. I know. <laughs> Prosecution, you can proceed. Let's see, as my first witness, I would like to call... This young guilty woman! I object! Fine, withdrawn. Is it true that you knew the answers to the test were in the drawer? And is it true that you wanted to do well in the test? Well, yes, but we- So you admit you had the means and the motive, guilty! Your Honor, that is not proof. Yes, these students have a history of cheating. And yes, they knew where the answers were. And yes, those answers are missing. And yes, they did do impossibly well on the test. Honey, you trying to get them to death penalty? Excuse me, can I say something? I admit, we saw that envelope, and it was really hard to put it back. And we thought about cheating, but we didn't. You gotta believe us. That's right, Mr. J. The honor code works both ways. We vowed to be honorable, but you vowed to trust us. Word, and if you don't believe us, then what's the point of having an honor code? You know what? They're right. Marcus, the evidence is overwhelming. 
Where did the envelope go if these hoodlums didn't take it? Is this some sort of magical drawer that makes things disappear? Marcus, you wanted to help the youth. Let me tell you something. You can't handle the youth! <laughs> Oh, I should have been a lawyer. There he is. The envelope got stuck on the bottom. Oh, door. when will the line stop? Bobby, the envelope is on the drawer. It must have slipped behind there when they put the answers back. Ha. Let me see that. Well, shave my legs and take me to Sunday brunch. It's still unopened. The defense rests. As much as it pains me, I have to rule. The students are not guilty. I'm excited for our double date now. <laughs> I'll get it. Hold on. We got to strike a pose. Hey, are you guys ready for your double date with Kelly and her roommate, Carrie? Yeah. <laughs> I also happen to be her husband. What's this about a date? A date? Who's going on a date? Only date I have is to go downtown and feed the homeless. So what's your story, you little leprechaun? <laughs> I gotta go with him because I'm hungry and I'm homeless. <laughs> Mark. I have the most amazing news. What's up? I just got off the phone with the White House. What? They want to give you an award, the Pay It Forward Award. That's fantastic, Bobby. I've always wanted one of those. <laughs> what is it? You postponed a billion dollar movie career to teach a bunch of misfits in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the country. An act like that either gets you an award or a straitjacket. They chose the award. That's great. <laughs> When do we leave? We? Uh, guys, don't get too excited. They only invited Marcus and moi. <laughs> what? what? Who's moi? And why does she get to go? <laughs> yeah, what about family? What about family? Though I'm technically raising you guys, you're not actually my kids. What are you talking about? We're kid-like. Yeah, we like to kid around. I got three kidneys. Tony, you have two kidneys. Is he a doctor? Are you a doctor? <laughs> get out of my personal life, please. You're not going. Every time I take you somewhere nice, you embarrass me. That is not true. What about the time I took you guys to Italy? That tower was already leaning before we got there. Yeah, right. <laughs> what about my birthday party in the south of France? <laughs> you burned down one mansion, suddenly you're labeled. Come on, Marcus. Look, you can trust us. We promise, if we mess up one time, you never have to take us to the White House again. <laughs> Besides, man, people mess up in Washington all the time. What happens to them? Simple, they get reelected. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll see what I can do. Bobby, see what you can do. Rock Rocker sensation Marcus Jackson is being prosecuted for his recent mishap with the paparazzi. I find you guilty as charged and order you to teach a class at South Central High School. Great news today. The president is giving me an award. The president of what? The Rotary Club? Uh, no, Principal Martin. The president of the United States. Oh, that's fantastic. What's the award for? Well, it's for postponing my movie career and coming down here teaching at South Central. Ooh, how noble. Look, just because I'm personally getting an award from the president of the United States doesn't mean I'm better than anybody else. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> Well, tell the president. His girl Cassie said, hi. Cassie? That's the name they referred to me on the restraining order. Restraining order? What? You're not the only person that I've stalked. <laughs> what about me? I postponed my other career. Nobody gave me an award. What other career? I'll have you know that growing up, I was being groomed to be the next great rodeo clown. What happened? 
I flunked barrel. <laughs> Professor Flapdoodle had it out for me. Flapdoodle. Well, the difference between us is I'm volunteering to be here. Obviously, you haven't seen my paycheck. Hey, I'm gonna be gone for a couple of days, you know? Do you think it's possible for somebody to come down here and uh, substitute for me? <laughs> Have you forgotten where you are? We never get substitute teachers down here because of the value system. The value system? Yeah, they value their lives. Talk to Cassandra, she has a lot of free time. And there's a reason why I have free time. If I wanted to work, I'd get a real job. Cassandra, if you did this for me, maybe I'll do a little something for you. You definitely have my attention. When I come back, maybe we can have a little dinner, spend some quality time, and listen to some music. Music? Mm. Like who? Shaka Khan. Mm. Marvin Gaye. Go on. Barry White. Uh, don't say it. Please don't yeah. say it. Oh. Luther Vandross. Oh, mm. not my Luther. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll do it. Yes. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Thanks, Cassandra. <gasps> Woo. Enjoy listening to my iPod. I feel so used. This way, gentlemen. I can't believe we're in the actual Oval Office. This is exactly like the set of my movie, President's Day. Remember this line, Bobby? This is my planet, and I'm staying right here. Mr. Jackson, you can stay on the planet, but please, get out of the chair. You right. Are you ready, Tony? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Say government cheese. One. Two. No pictures. Hey, hey, that's for my mama. She's not gonna believe I'm here unless I send her a picture of me in the Oval Office. There are plenty of pictures of the Oval Office in the gift shop. Yeah, but I'm not in them. And if you take another picture, you won't be in here either. Fine. Right. Can I get my camera back? You can get it on your way out. Oh, tough guy. <laughs> Think because you're bigger than me, I'm afraid of you? I'm from the hood. You do realize that I could snap your neck while making a sandwich. <laughs> Keep the camera. Mm -hmm. Jamal need to go to the gift shop. To buy a new camera? No, to buy a fresh pair of underwear. <laughs> Mr. Jackson. Gentlemen. Mr. President. Pleasure to meet you. Bobby Gold, agent extraordinaire. Nice to meet you, Stanley. <laughs> Marcus, my wife and I are big fans of yours. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad you were able to come and accept the Pay It Forward Award. Oh. Oh. Well, my friends, Tony and Jamal, are fans of yours as well. Oh. <laughs> Not me. I didn't vote for you. Beg your pardon? Huh? Oh, I said, uh, can I get your coat for you? Sorry, I panicked and it rhymes. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, I must say, you are more handsome in person than you are on the big screen. <laughs> and I didn't think that was possible. Oh. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, she's always had a crush on you. <laughs> <laughs> you so deserve this award. Mm. And I can't wait to give it to you. Mm -mm. <laughs> Give me what? <laughs> the award. What else? <laughs> of course, the award. <laughs> uh, Mr. President, you yes. have your meeting in the blue room, sir. Okay. We have to go. Okay. We'll see you later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice meeting you. Okay, Barney. <laughs> Guys, we got a serious problem. Did you see that? The first lady was coming on to me. You're crazy, Marcus. That's in your head. Marcus. Yes. I forgot to mention something. Mm -hmm. As our guest of honor, how about this afternoon I give you a private tour of the White House? Private tour? Mm hmm. And I'll show you things only the president gets to see. Sounds great. <laughs> I told you. Oh my God, you're right. Yes, she likes you. She really likes you. Oh. Mark, your sexiness is a threat to national security. You're right. We're all going to die. I sure hope not. Uh, you do know they have security cameras in here. I did not know that. OK, students, listen up. Let's talk about something you normally don't think about, and that's your future. Oh, I'm excited about my future. We having lamb chops for dinner. That's great. Can we look a little further into your future? 
Okay, I'm gonna go see the Clippers this weekend. Carlos, I wasn't talking about going to a game. I'm talking about you all actually going to college one day. <laughs> Look, I know I joke around a lot, but right now, I'm being serious. She's right, anything's possible. Did you guys know my dad went to Penn State? He did? Oh, wait, never mind. He went to State Penn. <laughs> right. Guys, 10 or 12 years from now, you're going to graduate and you'll want to make something of yourselves. So here's your assignment. Mr. Jackson wants you all to practice filling in these college applications. Aww. Yeah, right. We're just going to fill out these college applications just to hear them say no. Well, some may say no, but you only need one of them to say yes. It's like dating. You guys know what I'm talking about. If you ask 10 girls out on a date and only one of them says yes, you still have a date, right? What's it called when all 10 girls say no? Uh, Saturday? <laughs> it's called giving yourself a chance to succeed. Miss Washington, I'm sorry, this is a waste of time. You know what? Maybe you're right. We don't need to fill out these silly applications. Why don't we do? Something fun instead. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. A little to the left. Over, over. Right there, right there. Perfect, perfect. You know, these two presidents remind me of high school. <laughs> Why? You never took political science class? No, but our high school was on Grant and Jefferson. <laughs> you know what? Take my picture so I can send it to my mama. Tony, security said no pictures, man. Man, I don't want to disappoint my mama. <laughs> She's your mama. She's used to disappointment. <laughs> That was cold. <laughs> but I forgive you if you take my picture. Come on. All right, all right, fine, fine. You can have this on your way out. Hey, man, that was a gift. Thank you. We appreciate it. Do you see it? No, I don't. Oh, there's an eyelash in there, and I can feel it. It's driving me crazy. You need some eye drops? No. It'll be okay. I think it's fine now. You sure? Mm -hmm. You want me to kiss it and make it better? <laughs> Maybe later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta stay away from her, Bobby. I cannot have an affair with the First Lady. It's like a national disaster. Are you kidding? It'll be fantastic. It'll be on the cover of every magazine. Ah, oh, it'll be great for your career. But terrible for the country. Oh, please. My commission is much more important than the country. <laughs> Hey. Hey. Uh, Marcus. Mr. President. Uh-huh. Donald. Actually, it's Bobby. Here, here's my card. OK. Marcus, I was looking for you. Are you ready for your private tour? Oh, yeah, I was looking for you, too. I just got lost. <laughs> well, here I am. I know. <laughs> the highlight of the tour is the Lincoln bedroom. Mm. I think you'll really enjoy it. Give me a second. Did you see that? Yes, he threw away my business card. So are you ready? Yes, uh, but Bobby's going to come with us. <laughs> right, Bobby? Well, I thought it was just going to be us. <laughs> nope, we're a package. Marcus and I are inseparable. Yes. Well, that's too bad, Steve, because the Secretary of State is upstairs. He just wrote a book, and he's looking for an agent. See ya. Oh, this is driving me crazy. I just can't stand this anymore. What's wrong? Uh, Marcus, could you come a little closer ah! and look uh, at this? Mm, um, I don't think that'd be a good idea. <laughs> no, could you just look into my eyes and mm. tell me what you see? Um, mm, I see my life coming to a tragic end. <laughs> I just remembered, um, I have to take a nap. I will see you at dinner, okay? Bye. <laughs> Hey there, students. I thought about what you said, that college applications are a waste of time. I've got great news. I agree with you. Oh, okay, cool. So instead, we are going to do something productive today. I'm having a little get together tonight at my house, so I'm gonna need your help to get ready. Now, these are some clothes that I might wear, but they're missing a few buttons. Handle it for me. But wait, I don't know how to sew. Learn. Oh, and these are wrinkled. So I'm gonna need you to iron them for me. 
Light starch, crease, halfway up. Thanks. Oh, and you two, you're on guacamole squad. What, you think just because we're Latino we can make guacamole? Yeah, Miss Washington, that's profiling. So you can't? Well, I mean, I can, but it may not be very good. Mine's good. Okay, this is gonna be really good. <laughs> There's no cilantro? Don't worry, I have some in my locker. I don't understand. I thought you said this would be fun. I never said it was gonna be fun for you. Now get to work! <laughs> Bobby, I've been looking all over for you. I've been reading the Secretary of State's book proposal. The guy can't write. No wonder he's still a secretary. Oh, forget all of that. The First Lady is all over me. You don't know what it's like to have women throwing themselves at you nonstop. I'm telling you, it's a curse. Well, I have women cursing at me nonstop. It's almost the same thing. Look, you get your award and then we're out of here. As long as that president doesn't know his wife's lobbying for a good time, we're home free. Wait, wait, shh. Okay, Listen. Uh, my wife cheats. She doesn't think I know, but I do. Well, that's a pretty harsh accusation, Mr. President. Have you ever caught her in the act? No, but it's just a matter of time. When it comes to this, she's a cheater. Any day now, I will catch her red-handed. When I do, it'll be checkmate, game over. Oh, I hate when this happens. Don't worry about it, sir. I don't want you getting your hands dirty. I'll clean up this mess. No one will ever even know it existed. Thank you. Did you hear that? He's gonna make me disappear. Now do a good job on my car. I wanna see my face in those rims. And keep your hands off my eight-track tapes. Don't burn that dress and leave the price tag on. I gotta take it back tomorrow. Oh, Miss Washington, how much longer do we have to do this? When can we stop? When can we stop? <laughs> the answer is never. Did you all forget that you don't want to go to college? So, welcome to your future. As a matter of fact, let's practice this all together. Repeat after me. Do you want fries with that? Yo, Miss Washington, not everybody who doesn't go to college ends up doing menial labor. True. But if you go to college, you have a lot more options. So students, do you want options? Or do you want fries with that? Hey, Miss Washington, can you give me that college application? Yeah, I want to fill one out too. Me too. That's what I'm talking about. President, that dinner was delicious. Yes. Mm -hmm. Was that takeout? No. We have our own chef. Oh, yeah, keep him. He's good. He could easily <laughs> leave here and go get a job at a takeout place. <laughs> well, the only things we take out around here are enemies of the state. <laughs> Bobby, what are you doing? Making sure we got separate cars to the airport. This man has drones. We don't get Hollywood people here often, but... I have an idea for a TV show I'd love to run by you. Sure, we'd love to hear it. So, I know this is kind of far out, but what about a sitcom about the first family? <laughs> They're like a regular family, but they live in the White House. I I'm sorry, sir, but uh, uh, TV shows about the White House never work. That sounds like a cool idea. I mean, what kind of funny things happen around here? Funny things happen around here constantly. <laughs> One time, the Secretary of Commerce comes in here with a report. It isn't even collated. The first page is the last page. The last page is the first page. Oh, oh you should have seen it. Oh, the gut buster. Oh, oh. Okay, that is enough. I don't want to have to do this but I am going to break a heart to save the entire free world. Excuse me? Okay, listen, you guys need to be together. I am not going to be the reason you break up. Mm -mm. What are you talking about? I know how you feel right now. It's hard for you to control yourself when I'm around. I get that. 
<laughs> but you two really need to work this thing out, okay? Not just for each other, but for the nation, okay? For the free world. I have you know that we're happily married. Uh-huh, yeah, sure you are. We need an exit strategy. We need a getaway car. Well, here's my exit strategy. Out of my way! <laughs> Tony, this is a bad idea, man. Man, just snap the photo and let's get out of here. Won't nobody know we were right, here. All right, all right, all right. Hurry up. Pose, pose, pose. Right. <laughs> That's funny. That's very funny. <laughs> the ego on that guy. No more actors visiting the White House. I say we cancel Clooney next week. Oh, let's not get crazy now. Oh, by the way, I was cleaning out my desk and look what I found in my drawer. Huh? Wow. Now, did you know that this desk has been in the White House since 1880? This is John F. Kennedy sitting here at the same desk. And that's JFK Jr., his son, sitting underneath. How cute is that? Precious. <laughs> I was wondering if I could borrow some pancake syrup. Why do you need pancake syrup? Well, duh, you can't eat crepes without syrup. Well, Bobby, that's a waste of good food. You're already full of crepe. <laughs> Look, you got a creep eating crepe. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> right. Is this some lady's plate? Mine? Well, here you go. Oh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. Ooh, no, no. Look, I got to go to school anyway because I don't want to miss that pep rally. Pep rally? What do those kids have to cheer about? With a glee club get out of prison? Uh, not yet. But no, the basketball team is on fire this season. Bobby, look, they are threatening to win the state championship. Yeah, Carlos is leading the team in rebounding, assists, and points. Yes. And he's leading the league in steals. <laughs> yeah, that's on and off the court. Hey, guys, say what you want, <laughs> but I'm taking my leftover pot roast that Jamal made for me last night for lunch, and I am out. Leftovers? I thought we ate the pot roast. Nope, it's in here in the bag marked squash. But you know I hate squash. Exactly, player. Holler! Rock Rocket sensation Marcus Jackson is being prosecuted for his recent mishap with the paparazzi. I find you guilty as charged and order you to teach a class at South Central High School. Some booty, am I right? You are very right. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Going for the league championship, you must be pretty proud of yourself. <laughs> well, I don't like to toot my own horn, but, uh, toot, toot. <laughs> hey, Marcus, how does it feel to stand so close to greatness? I don't know, because you're blocking my mirror, player. <laughs> Man, you can't even spell greatness. Oh, oh please. That's easy. G R. The number eightness. <laughs> How many concussions has he had? Too many. Good morning. Good morning. It's such a wonderful morning. Oh. The flowers are blooming. The birds are singing. The teacher's been drinking. No, I have not. I just saw the man of my dreams last night. Wow. Well, Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Now, does he know he's the man of your dreams, or should he just assume when you let him out of your trunk? <laughs> ha ha. Marvin's an old friend. Oh. We used to date years ago. We'd laugh and talk for hours. We have so much in common. So he's a stalker, too? No. 
He's a great guy. Okay. Then why did you stop seeing him? <laughs> because his stupid wife came out of her coma. The nerve of her. Thankfully, she stayed awake long enough to give him a divorce. And now we're free to pick up where we left off. But there's one tiny problem that I need you guys' help. Okay, okay well, we can't. Guys, right. I need your help. Okay, but that's why we were trying to leave. But it's easy. Marvin mentioned that my famous chicken cacciatore won him over all those years ago. Okay, so make him some more. Well, that's just it. I kind of fibbed and didn't make it the first time. I ordered it from Verona's, this Italian restaurant downtown. I will order it again. I can't. Verona's burned down. Ugh. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'll whip up some chicken cacciatore for you. No offense, but I want to get a man, not kill him. <laughs> Marcus, you know some people. I bet you know a chef that could help a sister out. I mean, I do, but there are... Jamal! Jamal can help you out. Oh, please. I wouldn't let Jamal butter my buns. <laughs> Jamal made this. Taste it. That's wonderful. Hey, I can hook you up with Jamal and he'll take good care of you. Okay, hold on, hold on. I make a great pot roast too. Let me taste that. Mmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's supposed to taste like. He shoots. He scores. <laughs> you wish. I see you, Milton. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Please have a seat. <laughs> All right, cool your jets, people. I hope you're ready for your exam. It counts for 30% of your grade. 30%? That's like half. I see you're doing well in math, too. Hey! Danielle, I expect a passing grade from you. From me? Good luck with that. How about you, Mr. MVP, the basketball superstar? Did you study? Yeah, I studied, mm -hmm. but I don't see why. As long as I can sign a contract and get a huge signing bonus, then who needs to study? Okay. Well, that sounds like a foolproof plan, but it would be nice to have something to fall back on just in case. All right, everybody, you got 45 minutes to complete this test. And if you're thinking about cheating off of someone else's paper, remember, they're probably flunking too. Hey, Jamal. Let me get those for you. Thank you. All right. And before we get started, I just want to apologize in advance. Apologize for what? For that. What do you think you're doing? I think I'm bleeding. Now you have to apply pressure with your lips. Did Jamal tell you why I'm here? Yes. I told him you wanted to make chicken cacciatore to impress your new man. So I put two and two together and assumed you was talking about me. Oh, please. My new man is sexy and sophisticated. I know, me. Have you seen this onesie? <laughs> His name is Marvin, and I plan on being honest and devoted to him. Right after I trick him into thinking I make a mean chicken cacciatore. Did I forget anything? Nope, it's all here. Good. If you need something to cut that with, I can give you back the knife you stuck in my heart. <laughs> Thank you. Whatever. Uh, I'm gonna head on back. I'll see you after school. Okay. Tony. Yes? Shut your flap. What? I didn't say anything. I know. Your flap? Oh. It's against me. Oh. Coach, what's up, man? Hey, Marcus. Hey. Why don't you meet Derek Watson? Oh. We played together in high school. How are you, Derek? Oh, man, I've been a big fan of yours ever oh. since I saw you in Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was Will Smith, man. <laughs> oh, my bad. My, I'm sorry, I'm lunching. I'm lunching. You know what it was? It was rush out. <laughs> That was Chris Tucker, dog. What the heck were you in? Everything else. I never saw that one. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Thompson put me up to that. I've seen all your stuff. <laughs> you had me on that one. All right. Derek's a recruiter at State. He's here to scout Carlos for the big game. Oh, yeah, we're pretty high on Carlos up at State. We think he has what it takes to go all the way. Uh, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but uh, you guys won't be seeing Carlos do anything. He failed his English test. So, unfortunately, he can't play. I got this, Derek. Let me talk to Marcus for a minute. Now, Marcus, <laughs> as teachers, we're supposed to provide an opportunity for kids who might otherwise not have one. True. So do you think it's right that we take an opportunity away 
just because of a tiny little test? Carlos knew it was worth 30% of his grade and he didn't take it seriously. You don't know that. Yes, I do. Do you know what he wrote when I asked him to summarize the diary of Anne Frank? He said he didn't read it because it wasn't polite to read other people's diaries. <laughs> See, that's a good kid. Respects other people's privacy. <laughs> the rules are the rules. Your team is supposed to pass their classes if they want to play. Give the kid a break, right? Basketball is his only ticket out of here, right? He's not like me, he can't rely on his charm alone. <laughs> you asking me to look the other way and change his grade? Oh, no, you can look the same way. Just change the grade. What are you doing back there? Checking out that onion. Excuse me? He dropped the onion. Hey, man. I hate onions anyway, but not as much as I hate Marvin. He stole my woman, you know. I am not your woman. You know what? If you need me, I'll be in my room, mending my broken heart. When this chicken cacciatore's done, it's gonna be better than Verona's. Where'd you learn to cook so well? Well, you know, I grew up around my grandma. You know, she was a gourmet chef. Her cooking was amazing. Oh. My grandfather loved it, too. He ate every last bite she ever put on the table. <laughs> That's sweet. So her cooking made him happy? No, it made him dead. What? Yeah. <laughs> Grandma's cooking was tasty, but it wasn't really healthy. When he got sick, his arteries were so clogged, they didn't call a doctor, they called a plumber. <laughs> well, don't you go off and Marvin on me. Oh, no, you don't have to worry about that. I've learned to take a healthier approach. Same great taste, no clogged arteries. Good. Try this. Mmm, that's on point. Oh, Marvin is gonna fall in love with me all over again. Instead of chicken cacciatore, maybe we should call it chicken catchamani. I like that. Me too. Marcus, I have a two for one coupon to shenanigans. Come on, hurry up, let's go before they run out of ambrosia. I'm not going to shenanigans, Bobby. What? You have to go. It's a two for one coupon. Last time I had to bring a homeless guy. How did that save you any money? Mine was free, I made him pay. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? <laughs> hey, didn't you tell me on the phone you had a problem with Carlos? What's oh, up? Carlos, man, he did horrible on his last test. So I decided to let him retake it. Take, take, take. That's all these kids do. <laughs> Can I have my pen back, please? <laughs> I heard Coach Thompson was asking you to give Carlos a passing grade. <laughs> yeah. That's terrible. I know. Don't give him a passing grade. Give him an A. <laughs> give him an A? He can't even spell A. Come on, Freddie. You must know the value of a good education. I do. But what does a good education have to do with this school? It has everything to do with every school. I mean, come on. Man. We can't let our kids get out of here with a subpar education. Subpar? You teach golf? Marcus is right. Even if Carlos beats the odds and goes pro, he'll still need something to fall back on. If he makes it to the pros, he can fall back on his big fat wallet stuffed with cash. I am ready to retake this test. All right. Here you go. Good luck, Carlos. Yeah, good luck, Carlos. I want a piece of advice for you. Capca. What does that mean? Capca. C-A-B-C-A. -C -A. It's a multiple choice. First five answers. Capca. Let's go. Capca. Capca. Repeat it. Focus. Call it Capca. Uh -huh. Let's like, go. Like, uh, 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 uh. Everybody out. Oh. Shenanigans? Yeah. No. What? Two for one. I'm sorry, Carlos. You scored less than 50%. That's not even close. Come on, Mr. J. Nobody has to know that but you and me. I'm sorry, Carlos. You didn't pass, so you can't play. Fine, then. Thanks for ruining my life. Hey, don't slam my door. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, that looks perfect. Thank you so much, Jamal. I don't know how I'm gonna repay you. I do. <laughs> don't make the iron ship put you in the iron lung now. <laughs> Chill out, Missy. I'm just saying, you know, if some of your friends need cooking lessons or some catering, have them give me a call. 
It'll be my pleasure. Do you mind if I left the chicken cacciatore in your fridge? I'll pick it up tomorrow on my way to Marvin's. Why can't you leave it in your fridge? Because there's a little problem with my electricity. What's the problem? They turned it off. <laughs> oh, this cooking is so exhausting. I think I'm gonna take me a little cat nap before I go home. You can always sleep in my room. I just got a burst of energy. Out of my way, Yogi. See you tomorrow night. What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm playing checkers. By yourself? That's depressing. What's depressing is I'm losing. <sighs> King me. Again? I think I'm cheating. Where's Marcus? You missed him. Jamal took him to get a haircut. Don't care anymore. I'm hungry. Do you have any leftovers? No, we don't have. As a matter of fact, we have some delicious chicken cacciatore. <laughs> Ooh, I love chicken cacciatore. It's all yours. Here, enjoy. Take it home. Thank you. Tell Marcus I'll call him after my cacciatore induced nap. And now, out of my way! Enjoy the food. Thanks, Tony. I know who won't be enjoying it. Marvin. Yo, Marcus. How's my brother from another mother? He still can't play. I hate you with the heat of a thousand suns. This is so whack, Mr. Jackson. I know you don't understand, but in time, you'll get it. And what will I be doing when I get it? Am I gonna be working as a janitor? Or maybe I'll be telling my kids that daddy couldn't afford food because he didn't pass a stinking English test. Carlos, you know that you should have studied hard. But that's your answer for everything. And I did study. I'm just not smart enough. Carlos, let me ask you something. Were you good the first time you picked up a basketball? I was four years old. But were you any good? No, oh, of course not. Oh, okay, you practiced, right? And you applied what you learned and became the best baller in the city. Yeah, but that's basketball, it's different. It's no different. If you spend as much time on your schoolwork as you do basketball, I know you pass. No, this is so unfair. No, what's unfair is sending you out into a real world unprepared. Anything can happen out there. You twist your ankle, you blow out your knee, and then what? Oh, oh man, you are tripping, coach, tell him. He's right. Thank you, coach. No, not you. Mr. Jackson's right. I am? <laughs> when I graduated, I thought I was gonna be the next big thing. Had it all planned out. I was gonna play for the Boston Celtics, the Lakers, win a few championships, marry Miss America. <laughs> Talk about unrealistic expectations. <laughs> but then, you know what happened? What? I blew out my knee in college, and everything changed. Yeah, but that won't happen to me. Ah, I said that too. Mm -hmm. But thank goodness I had a backup plan. I used my time wisely in college, and I got my degree. Lucky for me, I had something to fall back on. So what, now you don't think I should play either? Uh -huh. If you can look yourself in the mirror and honestly say that you did your best to pass Mr. Jackson's test, and that you tried your absolute hardest, then yeah, you can play. I can? He can? Well, I tried my absolute hardest. <laughs> I am gonna play. Coach, I think that's a huge mistake. I don't think so. I bet your life on it. And, uh, no, I didn't try my hardest. I'm not gonna play. Man, you're smarter than you look. <laughs> Where could it be? I can't believe this is happening. Tony, did you eat the chicken cacciatore? No! Look, I promise, I didn't eat it. Bobby did. <laughs> Why would Bobby do that? Because I gave it to him. Why? I can't believe that you would purposely hurt me like this. I wasn't trying to hurt you. I was just thinking about yourself. Cassandra, I could just whip up another one real fast. You just go stall Marvin. No, I... that's okay. It's over. Maybe this is a sign. Yeah. This is a sign that I'm selfish. Mm. Look, I was jealous, and I hated the idea of you being so excited about another guy. When I like you. This is how you treat people you like? No, yes. I mean, knowing yes. <laughs> the point is, I do like you, and I want you to be happy even if it's not with me. So. <gasps> Veronis! I 
thought it burned down. It did. But I went online to find it rebuilt and reopened on this side of town. So I got you your famous chicken cacciatore, just like you used to fake make. Thank you, Tony. So you're not mad anymore? I'm furious. <laughs> and I'm flattered. You're all right, Tony. <laughs> Bye, y'all. I'm never washing my face again. You never washed it before. That's besides the point. <laughs>
you insult the kids, you pinch pennies, you criticize all the teachers. What do you do all day? I think that pretty much covers it. <laughs> Why, do you think you can do a better job? You know what, this eraser could do a better job. Really? All right, if you think you can do my job, then why don't we trade places for a week? Oh, you want me to be the principal? Yeah, but you can't use any of your own money, Mac Daddy Warbucks. <laughs> I don't need to use my own money. Really? Mm. Well, why don't we make this real interesting? Let's put some cash on it. Oh, really? Mm. Well, how much can you handle, Big Shot? How much can I handle? Mm. <laughs> how much can I handle? <laughs> how about a buck? You got a bet. Mm. And um, you gonna teach my class? Oh, teaching is a strong word. I'll just do what you do. I'll clean their cage and occasionally throw in some meat. Who ordered the short stack? Me. Echo one to Echo two. Have you located the vermin? No, and I haven't seen the mouse either. Check that. Rat at three o'clock. Rat at three o'clock. <laughs> what are you doing, Bobby? The question is, what are you two doing? Playing Call of Doofus? He's right, man. We've been at this for hours. Why don't we just call an exterminator? Are you kidding me? The tabloids get wind of this, they'll have a field day. Big action star can't handle a little mouse on his own. He'll be ruined. Look, I don't know what else to do. We laid out all types of traps, even a wedge of cheesecake. What? That was for the mouse? Was the poison in it? How you feeling? Fine. Oh, well, guess it wasn't enough. Just in case, don't go to sleep tonight. Once again, big time mouse hunter Bobby Gold to the rescue. What's that? This is the world's most powerful mouse destroyer. Is there a cat in there? No. Oh, it says, this emits an ear-piercing sound that's guaranteed to ward off all unwanted guests. Sounds like you. <laughs> no! It emits a high-pitched, ear-piercing sound that only mice can hear. Well, let's give it a try. Ah! That's what you said. Only mice can hear it. Cut it off! Why did I turn my head and cough? Oh. Well, don't just stand there. Get these things off of me. I can't believe you guys are afraid of a little mouse. Who can tell me about Edgar Allan Poe? Camille. He was Poe? <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe was an underappreciated genius who worked hard with very little financial success. Much like myself. <laughs> he went on to die alone with nothing to comfort him but his books, his booze, and his imaginary friends. God, I hate my life. Are you okay, Principal Martin? Principal Martin. Somebody get the nurse. It's a beautiful day to learn, isn't it? Welcome to our house of knowledge, people. In Spanish, that's casa de knowledge. <laughs> Good morning, Marcus, Freddy. Good morning. Hey, it's not freezing in here for a change. What happened? I happened. That's <clears throat> right, Marcus happened. As acting principal, I turned up the heat. Just like I turned up the heat on all your concerns, Samantha. Hmm, well, all right, Marcus. Enjoy your day. You too. He's way better than you, chump. Yeah. You realize he's only principal for a week, don't you, knucklehead? At which point you'll be back to being better than him. Don't touch me. <laughs> hey, Marcus, the new gym floor looks great. <laughs> new gym floor? Yes. And it's gorgeous. <laughs> Marcus, you know we can't afford a new gym floor. Next thing you're gonna tell me is that you got your class a new computer? <laughs> no, of course not. I bought us a new computer lab. 50 brand spanking new computers. 50 brand spanking new computers. Woo! Woo! Does Freddie want a cracker? Yeah! Oh, that was an insult. Mm. Oh. oh. So you ain't got no crackers? <laughs> oh, I get it. I know how you did this. You cheated. You used your own money. 
No, I used the school's weekly budget. Now, I had to move a few things around to make it work, but it wasn't even that hard. Marcus, this isn't the school's weekly budget. You spent our budget for the entire year. I did? Are yes. You, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure! <laughs> Oops. Oh my God. What? You've been principal for less than a week and you turned my beautiful office into a shrine to yourself. Yes, it's beautiful. The ski bum? Are you kidding me? More people saw this poster than the movie. If you adjust your attitude, I get you a DVD. <laughs> Please, I'd rather you poke both of my eyes out. Anyway, that can't be the entire budget for the year. Why? Because it would mean that we can't afford a new gymnasium floor and a computer lab? Oh. Now you understand why I do what I do. Like keep the heat off? No, I do that for fun. Okay, it's my bad. But maybe things aren't as bad as they seem. I just came from the bank and my paycheck bounced like a cheerleader on a trampoline. What do you mean you just came from the bank? Who's watching your class? It was a field trip. I didn't know okay a field trip for your students. They weren't invited. It was for me. Now where is my money? <clears throat> Yeah, I just got the phone my business manager. My paycheck bounced, too. You have a business manager? Yeah, Hector, the change guy at the laundromat. Oh, really? <laughs> what kind of business you have? It's called Nanya, as in Nanya business. Hello? <laughs> Freddie, this is the 70s. They want that joke back. Will you guys quit clowning around? This is messed up. Yeah, how am I going to pay for lunch? I got enough for the chimney, but not the changa. <laughs> We want our money, and we want it now. Oh, guys, take it easy. This is a simple technical problem. Yeah, and technically, you have the right to kill him because Marcus spent all of the money. Give me a day or two, guys. I promise you I'll straighten this all out. You have my word. One way or another, I'll make this right. Being principal isn't as easy as you thought it was, is it? You better have this fixed by the end of the day. OK. Is that the end of a regular day or a school day? Oh, good. What are you guys doing here? Well, we're here because the mouse is there. You have mice at Marcus's? Yep, a big one. And he's really, really smart, too. Yeah, like Ben. The old movie about the mouse? No, Ben, the smart guy across the street from us. He was on Jeopardy and everything. We had to call an exterminator to get rid of him. We get rid of the guy across the street? No, oh, the mouse at Marcus's. You will do no such thing. That mouse is a living creature. Let me slow it down for you. The fact that he's living is the problem. So your plan is to kill it? No. We're going to buy Mickey a bus ticket and tell him the ride is from Orlando. I don't believe in killing any living thing. When I used to spend summers in Kentucky with my auntie, we would catch mice all the time for fun and then just let them go. Well, thanks for the country bumpkin update. If I ever move into a trailer park, I'll call you for decorating advice. Now listen, the crew for the crib is gonna be at Marcus's in 24 hours. How much will it cost for you to give Mickey a stay of execution and get him out of that house? Please, if it'll save a life, I'll do it for free. Oh, what a nice girl. And a sucker. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Goodbye. Oh, I can't believe it. I called the flooring place, the sporting goods store, and the computer store, and nobody will take anything back. It's not a total loss. I was able to return the coffee filters at lunch. Oh, that's great. I can buy enough gas to drive off a bridge. Excuse me, gentlemen. What do you want? If you're here to sell something, forget about it. You're too late. All the money's gone, thanks to Dark Gable. Oh, I'm not selling anything. I'm Lois Yearwood. That's funny. You have the same name as the new superintendent of schools. You know what's funnier? I am the new superintendent of school. Well, hello. Hi, I'm Marcus Jackson. I know who you are. The fact that you're teaching in our little district is the source of much water cooler talk. <laughs> so what do we owe this pleasure? We have an itty bitty little problem. Mm. You see, according to district accounting, someone over here got a little carried away with spending. I know it's probably a mistake, but they sent me over here just to make sure. Oh, it's definitely a mistake. <laughs> You're gonna love this. See, Principal Martin was trying to make a point about how difficult his job is. <laughs> so we decided to switch jobs for a week. And I bet him a buck that I could do his job better than him. <laughs> Marcus, really, you don't <laughs> Now have... get this, silly me. I thought the school's yearly budget was the weekly budget and spent all the money. <laughs> Isn't that funny? 
<laughs> you ain't laughing. Okay, cool. Uh, Miss Yearwood, please, uh, don't be too hard on Marcus. Mm -hmm. I explained to him that we don't print money, we just shift it. <laughs> he doesn't understand finances. He's an actor. It's all show, no biz, if you know what I mean. Oh, I totally understand. Great. Don't worry, Marcus's job is safe. You, on the other hand, are fired. <laughs> you have till the end of the day to get out. Toodles, Mr. Jackson. Oh, I got this. Is that the end of the school day or the regular day? <laughs> you know what? <clears throat> Here's your buck. You win. So this is how it ends. I thought I'd be at this school forever. I wasn't happy about that, and I used to have to cry myself to sleep every night, but it's a job. I know you're feeling pretty low, but I got something that'll cheer you right up. I already take antidepressants. <laughs> I know a guy who pays good money for deliveries. All you gotta do is drive some boxes across the border. Really? What's in them? Obviously, I can't tell you that. But I do need to ask you one thing. Are you allergic to Cubans? Cigars? Maybe. Forget that. Listen, Principal Martin, I'm gonna make this right. I'm gonna start a petition and get everyone who loves you to sign it. Okay, that probably won't work. <clears throat> Look, you've done enough already. I'm just gonna go down to the unemployment office. I'll probably see a lot of familiar faces. It'll be like parent-teacher night. <laughs> I know things look bad, and I want you to know I feel responsible for this, but I won't stop until I get you your job back. You hang tough. You took a chance on hiring me, and I will forever be in your debt. I will quit before I put up with this. Excuse me. Hello? Yeah, I, I called about the principal's position that opened up at South Central High. How do I apply? Ah, guys, I'll, I'll be right back. Yeah, anytime's great for me. Where are you, where the one? Ooh. Ah. Where are you, where the one? When did she become Elmer Fudd? I'm not Elmer Fudd, okay? This is how I'm going to lure him out. Mice like baby talk. Come out, come out wherever you are, Mr. Frisky Legs. <laughs> she gave it a name. <laughs> Why would you name something you're gonna kill? I mean, capture and release into the wild. Oh, there he is, there he is. Ooh. She's coming out. Look. She's the mouse whisperer. Come on, little Frisky Wags. Come over here, little Frisky Wags. Come on. I got him! What? No. Ah! <laughs> it's a... What is it? I must say, I am very impressed. You're very good at getting rid of useless rodents. How much would it cost to get rid of those two? Yeah, real funny. Good job, Samantha, getting rid of that thing. Hey! It's not a thing. This is one of nature's creations, and it has every right to live and breathe as we do. Like that spider right there? Where? Right there. Why'd you call me down here? To glow? No. I called you down here to give you something. What? This. A chair? You know my car won't make it up the hill with that in the back seat. <laughs> no, not the chair, your job. What was the last thing I said to you before you left? Uh, I believe you asked me if you could have my parking space. Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> but before that, I said I'd get you your job back, fix this mess, and I did. Marcus, don't toy with my emotions. I'm really fragile. It's the truth. Last night, I went to the computer manufacturer. I thought they wouldn't take them back. They wouldn't, but I agreed to do a commercial for them. In exchange, they're making a huge donation to the school. Whoa, that's great. I know. Oh, man. that is so great. <laughs> How much? Too much. You should have kept this money for yourself. Hand over the check, Bobby. I don't want to. Bobby, give the man the check. To... You get fine. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll compromise. You give me the check and I won't rip your arm off. 
touchy, touchy, touchy. Wow, there's a lot of money here. It's enough to cover the teacher's paychecks. Mm -hmm. I could balance the budget. And with the money left over, I could get my mom the new hips she needs. Really? No, you're right. I'm gonna remodel my den instead. <laughs> you're all heart. You know, you didn't tell me how you got my job back. The superintendent was pretty firm. Oh. Marka. <laughs> you're not going to keep a girl waiting now, are you? I'll be right there, Snuckles. Oh, goody. I'll be waiting outside, my little chocolate kiss. Oh. oh, I need some air. I'm gonna be nauseous. Out of my way! No one's in your way. I know. I just like to make a big exit. Here, stand right here. No, like, no, like, right. out of my way! <laughs> so you took one for the team. Uh, it's the least I can do, considering. Thanks. And to show my appreciation, I'm gonna give you your buck back. Well, thank you. Psych. Now get out of my office. Snookums is waiting. Looking good, Marcus. Did you get a haircut? <laughs> oh, please. If you're being nice, I know you want something. Okay, fine. Look, the truth is the school needs money. Nothing big. Just a million bucks. What? A million bucks for what? Well, I don't know. Books, paper, pencils. Nothing important. A million bucks for books, pencils, and paper? Mm hmm And also, the city's making fix a drainage problem on the football field. They say it looks like a swamp, and it's a hazard. One kid loses his leg to an alligator, and all of a sudden, it's a hazard. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm not giving you any of my own money, but I'll do something even better. Will you adopt me? Will you marry me? No, and heck no. But I could put together maybe like a celebrity talent show fundraiser. <gasps> hey, you know, I got a lot of famous friends mm -hmm. that would love to donate their time to a worthy cause. <laughs> Talk is cheap. What stars can you get, Marcus? What stars can I get? I don't want to brag, but I know everybody. <laughs> <laughs> me and my superstar friends are like this. Oh, which one are you? The thumb? <laughs> The sensation Marcus Jackson is being prosecuted for his recent mishap with the paparazzi. I find you guilty as charged and order you to teach a class at South Central High School. up on the tissue. Jack, if you pull that plug, you're just a low-down, dirty dog. Plus, you cheated on me. Pull the plug. <laughs> oh, you two guys watching soap operas again? Maybe. You guys should do your own soap. The bald and the not-so-beautiful. <laughs> What's the matter, Marcus? Look like you lost your best friend. I asked practically every A-lister I know to help me with this school benefit, and not a single one said yes. They all turned me down. You don't need any celebrities. Do it yourself. Remember, before you did movies, you were a stand-up comedian. Yeah, you did stand-up on that comedy show for the heart of hearing. You mean Deaf Comedy Jam? That's the one. <laughs> yeah, but don't you remember his act? It's not exactly appropriate for a school benefit. Oh, no. <laughs> but you crack jokes about the audience. I mean, you really insulted them. <laughs> I know, I know. My comedy back in the day was pretty dangerous. But I mellowed out since then. I mean, I write some new material and everybody will love it. Really? Mm -hmm. It's easier said than done, man. If you need some help with some new material, you know, me and Tony some pretty funny guys. <laughs> yeah, funny looking. <laughs> Woo! I said funny looking, guys. <laughs> Okay, fine, I'm rusty. Cool. All right, you know what? I just gotta get back at it. It's just like riding a bike. Yeah, off a cliff. What? I said you have a gift. <laughs> hey, Maria. Oh, Carlos. Hi. Oh my gosh, Miss Long is really piled on the homework tonight, huh? Yeah. So, um, 
Maria, there's something I want to ask you. Go for it. You think the kings are going all the way? I don't know. Have the queens been drinking? <laughs> That's what you wanted to ask me? Yeah, yeah. See you. Danielle, can I ask you something? Sure. Okay, there's this girl I wanted to ask to dance, um, and we've been friends, but I kind of want to take it to the next level, but I don't know how to tell her how I feel. You're so cute. Excuse me? You don't have to be shy, Carlos. I understand completely. I'd love to go to the dance with you. With me? You want to go to the dance with me? Absolutely! I am so glad you asked. We're going to have the best time. Well, well, Marcus. Little Birdie told me all of your celebrity friends bailed on the fundraiser. Marcus, we rented an entire nightclub. The tickets are sold out. Look, I'm sorry I couldn't get you guys any stars. I could do the show myself. It's a 90-minute show. It's not that easy. Hey, Chuck the Star, you're not the only one around here with talent. Why don't you give us some stage time, too? Let us audition. Yeah, exactly. A lot of us teachers have some amazing hidden skills. <laughs> you got that right. But bam <laughs> I'll humor you. You know, you guys going all South Central Idol on me. Let's do it. <laughs> the great Fredini, the world's greatest flame swallower. Flame swallower? Please don't try this at home. Please don't try this here. <laughs> Black swan, really? No, African-American swan. You might not know this about me, but there's a good chance that I could become the lead saxophonist in the Philharmonic. I'm just waiting for my call back. How long you been waiting? 31 years. <laughs> okay. Let's see what you got. Mm. 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 Album drops. <laughs> Everyone, it wasn't easy, but the decision has been made. And the teacher that will be performing with me in the fundraiser is. Nobody! I'm going solo. It's a packed house. You sure you're ready? Yeah, man, just because I haven't done stand up in a decade doesn't mean I'm not ready. I, I know, I'm sure they'll love you. But remember, no insults. I won't. Bobby, just, you gotta say it, though. Come on. Oh, oh. Okay, superstar. It's showtime. Yeah. <laughs> now, the moment you've been waiting for, the brother from his own mother, put your hands together for South Central's own Marcus Jackson! <laughs> All right, everybody, what's up, what's up? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. What did the buffalo say to his son when he dropped him off of school? Bye, son. <laughs> Bye, son. Bye-bye. <laughs> Is this thing on? Unfortunately, yes. Okay, hey, did y'all hear about the skydivers that got married in midair? <laughs> Talk about falling in love, baby. <laughs> Did someone okay. leave the bathroom door open, or is that his jokes I'm smelling? <laughs> Say something funny, you hack. Get to the jokes. You want jokes? 
You want jokes? I got jokes. Uh-oh. Don't do it. I know that look. Here come the insults. <laughs> Can't believe I'm getting heckled by Principal Martin. Principal Martin's so skinny, he can look through a peephole with both eyes. Who out there? <laughs> And then there's Freddie, the principal's assistant. I don't know how. He's so dumb, he tried to call 911. He couldn't find the 11. <laughs> oh, I got more. I got more. Oh. And then there's Cassandra Washington, the math teacher. I don't know how she the math teacher. Her idea of math, if I sleep seven hours, work one, that's an eight-hour day. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. And then there's Samantha Owens. Poor Samantha. Oh, I'm not trying to tell you she gonna be lonely for the rest of her life, but if she keep hanging out with that diabetic cat, he gonna make it to the altar before she does. Oh, meow. Meow. And then there's my good friend, Jamal. <laughs> He's the worst chef I've ever seen. The only person to volunteer to feed the homeless, and they say, we good with the trash, homie. <laughs> Marcus, take it easy. <laughs> Come on, Jamal, you can take it. Let me tell you, Jamal is so lazy, the only exercise he get is when his nose running. <laughs> Fine. You feel that way? I'm out of here. Oh. Of course you leave it, so you can get home and eat all my food. <laughs> Marcus, I'm so hungry. I'm hungry, Marcus. <laughs> Good day. The next show, talk about their mama. <laughs> <laughs> Who else wants up? Who wants up? Hi, Carlos. Hi, Maria. <sighs> hey, Carlos. Want to see a picture of the dress I'm going to wear to the dance? I don't think so. <laughs> it's bad luck. That's only with a wedding dress, silly. <laughs> nice, huh? Yeah. And it's all for you. <gasps> I can't wait for Friday night, Carlito. <laughs> you two look cozy. Is everything OK? Actually, no, there's this problem. See, I wanted to take this girl to the dance. Um, I told Danielle about it, but she totally misunderstood. You mean you don't want to go to the dance with Danielle? No, and this other girl is just beautiful and funny and just perfect for me. But I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. Oh, don't worry, I'll straighten it all out for you. You will? Absolutely. When the time is right, I'll just tell her that you actually want to take me to the dance. And I'll just kick her to the curb. Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea. Well, sure it is. Danielle can take it. She gets dumped all the time. <laughs> but don't worry. I'll be gentle as a lamb. Uh. <laughs> We're going to have such a good time. Mm. My Carlos. Hi, <laughs> yay. Hey, cheer up, Carlos. Freddy! Hey, what's up, baby? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you hurt? I'd call 911, but I can't find the 11. <laughs> Freddy! Oh, man, take a joke, bro. <laughs> hey, Cassandra. Ah, back that thing up, Judas. Hey, man, what's wrong with her? what is wrong with her. She was insulted by your act, as we all were. I knew this was a mistake. We should have canceled the show the moment we found out you couldn't book any real stars. What do you mean, real stars? You know, unlike yourself, people with actual talent. You are so immature. Really? Well, double on you. <laughs> Come on, everybody, let's get out of here before Mr. Funny Man insults us all again. <clears throat> Hey, Jamal, I'm so sorry about last night. What's up with the suitcase? I said I'm sorry, man. I heard you. It's too late. The damage is already done. Come on, bro. You know we bag on each other all the time. Is it because I did it in front of everybody? It's because your jokes were true. I am lazy. Oh. And it's all your fault. Why is it his fault? Because he enabled me. I wasn't lazy before I met Marcus. I was hard working. Nope. You were hardly working. <laughs> Get out of my way. Out of my way? Now I'm insulted. Why? Because you stole my line, and you didn't even do it right. Now out of my way! I know I hurt your feelings. Man, I let you live here, and I give you everything because you're my best friend. Maybe so. 
I'm out of here. Wait a minute, hold up, where are you gonna go? I don't know. Somewhere where I'm appreciated. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. He's going somewhere where they appreciate short, bald, and lazy guys? Yo, whoa, wait for me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I know what I got it good. <laughs>
Enjoy. You know, I want to thank you guys for letting bygones be bygones. Yeah. Cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> That's so cool. Wait. Oh. <laughs> you blew my hand to the cup. Yeah. Oh, I deserve it. You got me. Yeah, we got you. <laughs> Marcus, if you want the glue remover, it's right here. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? OK. <laughs> Very funny, people. <laughs> Too? Yeah. Have a nice weekend, Marcus. See you on Monday. Bye bye. Hey! What? Well, Marcus, you know, of course I could stay and help you, but Please. I have to go plan my cat's wedding. Samantha, I really love your cat. I was just playing. Come on. Where is everybody?